We live now. Almost. What's up, Meeple Town? No, this is a podcast. That is not how we start. How's off it this. going? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Podcast. Start the podcast. <laughs> Do it. Are we ready to go? Hey. Hello, residents of Meeple Town. This is Dean. John. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I mean, your name was, was no, I know. I'm Jonathan. This is Jonathan. <laughs> well, last time I said not Dean, but it doesn't really work since you're here. And today we are going to be looking at our top 10 games of 2020. So thanks for joining us for episode number 71. <laughs> 71. I'm That's right. Prepared. This is, is the well-prepared right? episode. 70 70. 71. That's right. What is going here. on, y'all? How's it going? Games of fire. We're excited today because we're going to... There you go. That's the podcast, Dean. <laughs> we're excited today because we're going to be doing... We're doing live. So this is a Meeple Town Live. We are going to be doing our personal top... 10 games of 2020. Yes, Meeple Town, it is March, almost April. But you know what? We really, I don't know. There's a ton of games. And I'm still going, I wish I could play this. I wish I could play that. Mm -hmm. I wish I could play that. <sighs> you feel like that too? Dean looks really serious right now. If you're listening on the podcast, he's looking super serious because I'm not going to lie, y'all. We've been scrambling here at the end. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, we've no, been scrambling. We oh, we've been scrambling. We thought that we had enough, you know, time. We got here a little bit uh, early or a decent amount early, but yeah. We actually, in fact, Jonathan and I get a little closer, Jonathan. There you go. We hey, have John. to share a microphone because <laughs> I couldn't get his microphone working. <laughs> so uh, for those who are listening on the podcast, I'm going to spend a couple minutes here and just shout out to Ben and some folks that are popping in. We got hey, Steven. Steve. We got Clever Swine. Look at this, man. We got all kinds of folks. We're popping in here. Spring yes, is yes, here. yes. Spring Ooh, is here. Outside. Speed readers. That's right. I'm going fast. I'm going fast. I'm going fast. Uh, yeah, well, I forgot. Yeah, there we go. So, hey, what's up, everybody? You guys want to just dive in and do this thing? That's that's yes, what, I'm ready to go. Why I was looking so intently in my computer is because I was throwing the first game up there because I'm ready to go. All right. Who's going in what order? Uh, Dean won the Schwazi. I won the Schwazi. Okay. <laughs> so it's going to be me and then you and then Jonathan. Yep. All right. That means I'm the anchor. That's you're the anchor. You're batting cleanup. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Oh. That means that the best game hey, overall get little, get little, be said last. That's get a little closer. Oh, I'm sorry. There you go. Sorry. We got. We got to get a little closer. Can I shove my arm around you. I, I would prefer yeah. that actually. I don't Can't tell you how thankful I am <laughs> to be on this end of the table. I'm ready for my number ten. I'm ready to go. Are we supposed to do the COVID disclaimer? Like just so you we've know, all had COVID. We've all had COVID, so we're you know. Some of us more recently than others. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I've actually even had my first dose of the vaccine. So, so like clever swine said, nice deep fake of Dean. <laughs> so I want to say that because yeah. So nice those man. we do need to let's talk, hit that up for one second before we do this list, Dean. For those who are listening on the podcast, we you know Jonathan and I did the last podcast. Mm -hmm. Dean has been out with COVID for a while, so bad to where when he finally got back this week. He was late to our get together because he took the trash out. That's how bad it was for you, huh? What? You said that you got winded <laughs> taking the trash out. Oh. Look, oh, you, I did. Oh. I did get winded taking the trash Look, out. Look at you know what I just I also have some COVID right. fog going on, so I'm not exactly remembering everything that I've said. I just caught Dean in a lie. So it really wasn't the fact that he was taking the trash out. But it was it was something else entirely. So it was like, what are you talking about? He just made me an excuse. COVID brain. Can I talk about number? Wait, wait, wait. Before, I need a disclaimer. I always put a disclaimer on my list every time. My disclaimer this time is we have waited so long because I haven't wanted to. I, I've wanted to play more and more games. But unfortunately, I still have a list of 2020 games that I haven't got to because stupid COVID took away from some game time. So there's yeah. there's some, especially that are going to be on Jonathan's list, that I'm going to make some comments about that I, I think probably could have very well made my list had I had a chance to play them. So. Actually, I think there's two that would have 100%. That's made probably list. right. That's probably right. Maybe even, maybe three, and we'll talk about them as we go. Yeah. My number 10, are we ready? Yep. So let's <laughs> add this to the stream. There it is. It showed Jeez. up. Number 10 is Pan Am. Boom. Pan Look at Pan Am. <laughs> What? <laughs> on the podcast, they can't hear, but uh, the way that we, the stream yard is doing, hold on, let me see here. <laughs> the live stream, you guys are off of the live stream, basically. You guys have to get in really close. Oh, that's fine. You just need to here, listen to me right I'll now. I'll just move the camera back and forth a little bit. This is really technological. There you go. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. You'll, you'll be able to see me. <coughs> oh, goodness. Uh-oh. Uh, I points. think this is the closest me and John have ever been. 
So Pan Am, here are the reasons that I like it. Let me, I, I've realized something about myself in thinking about my gaming over COVID. Route building is something that I enjoy in games. I've realized about myself. I, I like Ticket to Ride. I know uh, Jonathan really doesn't like it. No. Um, not a game that, <laughs> that you know some gamers really like, but I found myself really liking some different route building games, and this is one of them. But that's not the only reason I like this game. There is auctioning in this game. There are events that come up in this game. There is stock buying in this game. And, and that's the whole purpose of the game is whoever's going to have the most stock. Now, John and I talked about this beforehand. We both really don't like the last round event, especially. Um, that's correct. That is the thing that drags this game for me more. I think this game would be maybe even higher up on my list if, uh, if it didn't have, if there was a different way of doing that last round event. Um, because it, it can really throw you off and can have a huge impact on the game and who's going to win the game. Could you house roll that out? You probably can. I'm sure you can, but we haven't done it. And I, I try not to, especially when I'm looking at like rating and ranking games and stuff. So anyway, that is uh, Pan Am. Love this game. My number 10. I liked Pan Am. Did you play this one? Yeah. And actually I forgot this was a 2020 game because I played it pre COVID. Yeah. And that was so long ago that <laughs> It feels like a different lifetime. Did you like <laughs> it or no? Yeah, it was a, it was like a seven and a half for me. It was yeah, really good. Pretty. I it's probably the best Target game. I'd have to think about that for a minute. But it's, it's probably yeah, my favorite game that you could get. Like you need to get closer to the mic, Jonathan. There box. you go. It was a Funko game, right? Is that um, is that who did this? I'm not looking at it right now. I don't remember. Um, it is definitely. Uh, it was a Funko game. Yeah, it is. I a thought Funko that's right. Game. So it's. It's up there with, and they've done some really good stuff. Prospero Hall is one who designed this. It's, it's listed as it's, Yeah, Hall. it's my favorite Prospero Hall game. I liked it. It actually was kind of borderline for me. For me. I didn't like that last round, though, like you said. It well, was... and I've only played it at two players, and sometimes it's hard to judge games like that. Like, I feel like it, it was one of those that could have been better with a higher player count, too. But... There you go. All right, so we got that. But also, before we move on to my number 10, oops, I clicked on the wrong thing. Curious hey, about Jonathan's what? mom is, is commenting. How about that? Hey, mom. Hi, Jonathan's mom. <laughs> hey, Jane. How you doing? That's awesome. Hey, Jane. And um, Emilia wants to know what's in my red solo cup that I have going on. <laughs> Yay. No, actually, it's a protein shake because I'm getting I'm, – I just went to the gym <laughs> – and I'm getting no, massive. Yeah, John Musk <laughs> is constantly talking about how he's getting jacked. It's really – that's the problem that – we have with being so close quarters today is like my shoulders are getting so huge that hardly anyone can fit in the screen anymore. <laughs> I think you say next to the broader shoulders. <laughs> it, really, it really is. It really is a protein shake. See all that nastiness. Hey, all Jonathan, right. that's a great shirt, by the way. Oh yeah. That's a, is that a Meeple Mountain the, shirt? Meeple Mountain, Mountain, that's right. Tennessee flag, but instead it's Meeple. So yeah. Okay. I love that Tri-star shirt. Bits. So my number 10, we better get through this. huh? Okay. Yeah. yeah. We've got through one so far. My number 10 is my city. <laughs> Actually, um, it's one of those games that, you know, I think I gave it about a seven and a half out of ten uh, whenever we did this. I did. I know what I, what I gave it. Um, but it's one of those that I, I it's just so easy to get to the table. Jonathan mm -hmm. and Dean, we were all talking about this beforehand, um, that we just really like games that we can get to the table with anyone. I can get this to the table with anyone. It's a good polyamino game. I like how you got the legacy uh, piece going in this game. I think that's really, really nice. Um yeah, and like I don't it, think I'm showing any spoilers. It gets no, it gets progressively harder. Like it starts off super easy, and then the more and more you play, have you played this one, Jonathan? I haven't, but I, I heard some people talk about it, and I guess the thing that intrigued me was that they're saying that it's an easy game to sit down and play like ten times in a night. Yes. Well, okay. Here's the thing: we planned on playing. You remember this? We planned on playing through like the entire game. We said we can do this. We set aside like hours and hours. But your brain, like it is a super simple game, but it rocks your brain. We played six games and we were both toast. I huh. mean, it was it, it was shocking how much of a brain burner, even though the game itself is super simple. It's just a lot to think about. I, I got to be honest. Every time I see Legacy, I'm instantly turned off because in my game group and the people I play with, they tend to like variety over replay. Um, and so I think the farthest I've ever gotten a campaign game is three games you'll get yeah you'll get like, further in this one for sure yeah but. so it, even if a game is great it just makes me not want to even go there because yeah. i've got like five of them that i've never finished anyway so i want to get another campaign game 
Yeah, I get it. I get it for sure. The first game of this, I think, took what, like, ten minutes or something like that. Hey, it's Dean. I, I'm oh, going to correct sorry. your mic. You, yeah, you keep looking at us, and then it's going to sound awful on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey guys, what are you doing? How is everything going? Oh, John hey, told hey, me to pull my mic away from my mouth before we started. So I'm just look at the picture. No, put it closer now because I'm getting closer. Yeah. Okay. I'm good. I'm sorry. Hey, Stephen uh, O'Rourke says uh, my city is one that I'm dying to play. So yeah, it's good. It's a really good game. Yeah, I think you fun. would really like that one, Steve. Well, and I guess if it's a family weight game, that's probably the easiest type of legacy game to play because you're with your family more than anybody else. It's true. I mean, all right, get up in this mic, Jonathan, and give us your number ten. Wait, is is Dean ready? Yeah, I'm getting there. So uh, Dean gave qualifiers. I'm going to give some caveats. Oh. <laughs> I was pressured into not putting reprints on this list, even though I really wanted to talk about a couple. So I'm going to talk about Haunts of Teutonica so. real quick. If you have not played Haunts of Teutonica, go buy it right now. So that's not your number 10. It's not my number 10. It was way higher up my list. Way, <laughs> way higher up my list. But they pressured me into taking it off. So I do have one second edition in my list, but it's like a real second edition with new rules and stuff. Um, but because of that, it means I get to talk about my number 10 that's newer. There we newer. go. Get juicy in the mic. Get juicy. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> I almost made you say get juicy. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Um <laughs> So my number 10 is Title Blades. Uh, this was a Kickstarter that we waited on for like two years. It was really, really behind, but it's one of the prettiest games I've ever seen. Not, not just the box art. The box art is gorgeous. It's got that whole like Caribbean vibe. Um, it's kind of a comic booky style art by Mr. Cuttington, which I found out was actually a husband and wife team. I didn't know. Really? That. Huh. Okay. Um, they just go by Mr. Cuttington which is kind of interesting, but they kind of created this whole world and then they built a game around it. There's actually going to be a second Kickstarter here soon for an RPG. For those of you who like RPGs, they've created this whole, this whole world for it. Um, but the, the pieces laid on the board are beautiful. It is a huge table hog, like one of the biggest table hogs I own, both the box and the game itself out on the board. But really it's one of the biggest table. Oh hogs. my goodness. Wow. It's so big. Like it barely fit on my game table. Um, it's, wow. it's so wide. Like you see, it, the, the picture there doesn't do it justice for how big those pieces are, those board pieces. Um, but it's really fun. It's it's kind of, we only, we, we haven't played everything in it. And I feel like it's one of those games that you need to play more to really get the depth of it. Got you. Um, and play the advanced game and with the expansion and everything else. But we haven't gotten into it that far. Um, but basically what you're doing is it's worker placement. And there's different islands. If you can see that picture there that you're going to be going around and you're going to be, the, the theme of the game is, this is the one of the ones, by the way, that I think Dean is going to really like. It's very thematic. So the whole theme is there's just like an alternate universe and these monsters were coming through and attacking their village. So they created a time rift that keeps the monsters at bay. But what this game is, is these young people in the village are competing to become warriors to help fight these monsters off. And so you're being judged by judges who are watching you do these challenges and the challenges will increase the stats on your little player board which will do things like allow you to have more dice for combat or um, refresh your dice that you use for combat more and around um, or get player power cards that you can use to do cool effects in the game. But for the most part, it's it's a pretty standard worker placement game. If I was going to compare this to one other worker placement game, so so many, it's it's a little, it's got a little Champions of Midgard to it because it's definitely you like Euro. Champions of Midgard for I sure. do, yeah. So does my family. Um it's it's got the whole euro mechanisms, getting resources, spending those resources, going to work replacement spots, but it's also got dice combat. Um, but there's lots of mitigation for the dice combat. Lots. There you go. Um, so yeah, it's a really good game. Very solid. Um, I don't know why I'm not that interested because it's too thematic. I feel like it's you not didn't like be champions good. that much. Yeah, I mean it's okay. I'm okay right, with but it. if you're okay with the game and somebody's like, it's just like this game, you're not gonna be like, That's true. Yeah, I want to play that. Great point. As Dean's pulling up his number ten, I'll pull up a couple of comments. Uh, Emily said, I finished my city and like how the rules keep changing up. I agreed. Like there, it's yeah, fun. It's like, oh, exciting. What's going to happen here? And, you know, and it's usually just really something small. And uh, that's actually quite nice. Clever Swine is talking about Table Hog Praga. That may or may not be on <laughs> someone or everyone's list. Who knows? I guess we're going to find out what happens. I don't like Vladimir Suchi at What all. game is that again? <laughs> 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 all right, Dean. So why don't you go ahead and do your number 29. Oh, nine. There we go. <laughs> it's really not that difficult. We're going literally in order down the, down the <laughs> line here. All right. My number nine is a game that John for sure has no interest in. Uh, I don't know about Jonathan. Maybe um, Jonathan is more into thematic games than what John is for sure. 
I think um, I'm somewhere between both of you, actually. Yeah, you are. I would say so. I'd say that's that's fair. Forgotten Waters is a game where <laughs> over that way. I'm sorry. Um, I just won't be able to look at you guys. That's fine. Um, Forgotten Waters is a game where <clears throat> you are uh, a pirate and you are on a ship and traveling around. This game is a lot about the story and not about the gameplay in general, and and, and that's that's a big reason why this would not be a big game that that John enjoys. But if you if you like games that are really John's. story that is really story driven and not necessarily about the mechanisms. Now the mechanism it's it's super simple worker placement, um, but then what happens after you place your workers is uh, kind of determined by the roll of the dice a lot of times. And for me. The experience is a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed this game. Introduced it to family. They really enjoyed it. Uh, this is one that is getting an expansion coming out soon, and I'm really excited about that. I, I've really enjoyed my plays of this for sure. Dean, is this one of the Dead of Winter? Is it in that? Yeah, it's a Crossroads game. Okay. So, yeah, it, Dead of Winter Realm, and this is uh, a game that's – and I love Dead of Winter. I've enjoyed the games that I've played in that in that realm. Um, this is also an app-driven one, which you know may or may not uh, be something that, <laughs> that people like. Um, I don't. This might be my only you really app -driven game the, this year that I've that I played. Dean, this is you know you always get on to me about having like games I cling to, you know, or something like that. You know, that, oh, you keep talking about this game. Forgotten Waters is almost that game for you. You know that you've really no. talked about this <laughs> all the time. No. I was listen. I got a call last night in the middle of the night, and it was Dean going Forgotten Waters. Forgotten Waters. <laughs> Forgotten Waters. And I was like, I think you're searching for the game that is, what, what's the game that you talk about all the time? What is that one? If you don't know it, then you don't know it. And I can see it in my mind, but my COVID brain is, is not allowing it to, to surface. The name of it's surface. It'll come back to me. It you're was kinda, a, um, are you, you're kind of botching this whole episode. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> COVID brain. Just you're doing, excuse. I'm just kidding. You're doing uh, well. Speaking of botching, John's number Yeah, no, that's a good, is, yeah, that's a good, that's a good transition. Nice. I'm here somewhere. I gotta find it. Here we go. Oh okay. man, it's taking forever. All right, All right here, here we go. go. So my number nine is one that I've just played fairly recently, and that is Fayum, which is uh, Freedom and Freeze's latest game that just came out. Um, you know, Rado what intrigued me was Rado said it was his favorite freeze game, mm -hmm. and I, it's not better than Power Grid in my in my opinion. After a couple plays, and this was the game on my list that was the hardest for me to put on my list because I've only played it twice. And that makes me nervous. And as I play it, I've said, you know, this game could go up and this game could definitely go down. Like there are just some things about it. And I don't want to really mention a lot of those because I don't because it may not be true. You know, so I don't want to, you know, spread rumors around here. Yeah. Um, but it's really interesting that you have these cards and it has the Concordia style kind of where you're you, on your play. You're actually playing a card simple or you're going to be picking up a card and oh, buying man, a card and doing that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and every card's different. So like there's like I think there's maybe one card that has two of the same. There's uh, fifty something cards there. There's more than that, but you, uh, anyways, there's like sixty something cards or something like that. Um, but everyone is on. You see all those pieces on the board. Everybody is working together. You just score points for doing certain things. So if you build the roads, you score points. But if I build the roads, Dean might be able to travel persons around and score points by doing Some that. Some other game that does that. Yeah. And the other interesting piece to this is that whenever you – it's got that, like, the phase, like, in Cordy where you pick your cards up, but you only mm. pick up three. Oh. And you have to pay to pick up more. Mm. So, like, cards are going to get buried. And you want to bury cards sometimes because whenever you do the administration phase, if you have no cards left in your hand, you get three bucks. If you have one, you get two. If you have two, you get one. So, actually having – yeah, having more – um, cards in your hand is actually less. It's not as good um, for money purposes. So a lot of really interesting pieces. My wife, you know, we played it last night again, and she was like, "Nah, it's just okay." I liked it a lot more than she did. Um, but yeah, so there we go. That's my number nine. Fayum. I still don't think I've even played a Freedom and Freeze game. It's crazy. That's no, crazy. no, no. We played that something fear, a little card game that like you don't actually read that. the rules beforehand. Yeah, we played that at. Um... And, at the Game Point Cafe. Yeah, right? goodness, yeah. I've got COVID brain too. That's gonna be my wow. excuse. I think it's called Fear, actually. Yeah, Fast right. Forward Fear. That's yeah, it's Fast called. Forward is the series of them. Yeah, um, that was a neat little game too. Not, I mean, you know, for what it is, I thought it was. It was we could play it in three minutes. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Steve's <laughs> popping on to say that they, he loves our content. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Bot Project Elite after our playthrough. Wow. Look at so that. there we go. Oh, how about that? Anyone Did else? You like it? That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Hopefully. <laughs> Anyone else that wants to give us comments about how much they like us, we'll pull that comment up on the screen and we'll talk about it on the podcast. John likes that validation. 
I must have. <laughs> I must have this. Oh my goodness. Uh, I feel a bit. <laughs> Games of Fire says, "Hey, dangerous for our pocketbooks, but I love your content. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you it so is. much. It really, it really is awesome. We try, we try our best to have fun and play games, and we're glad that you all like it. Yeah, because we enjoy it. All right, Jonathan, what's your number nine? Right, my number nine is another one of the games that I think Dean would maybe have on his list if if he had gotten to play it. Santa Monica. Can I say that I was stuck? I've never played this. But like, I think Dean and I were both went, wow, like the top 10. Yeah. Like because it's lighter and stuff, but I've heard a lot of positive. I'm going to be honest. I was stunned at how much I liked it when I played it. Okay. I, now I want to play it. Yeah. Um, Cause I didn't have a lot of high expectations. Um, so I got to play this with the buddy of mine, David. Uh, he had bought his copy and I honestly, I, I really, I went into it with like literally zero expectations. I thought it was a cute little game. You know, it's drafting. I was like, okay, it's not going to be long. Even if it's not good, I can get through this. Like, did you buy this or did someone else? No, no, no. Uh, David. You said David. That's what I thought you just it. said. Yeah, sorry. And he, uh, and I got it, I got it for Christmas this year because I liked it so much. But Wow. Um, it is, it is basically a failed. So if you like point salad games or you like games, if you, if you look at those cards right there, you can see all the little scoring at the bottom. Almost every card either scores for you or gives you something that would score on another card. So basically all you're doing is drafting from a little uh, three card tableau and you're placing them on either on your beach on the upper part there or on your, um, what is that called boardwalk on the bottom? And you're scoring for things like adjacency um, to other similar types of buildings or you're scoring based on where you get your visitors, you get little meeples there. And they some of the cards you play will allow you to move them around. And then you can get these little sand dollars and every game you're going to have different abilities that everybody can use by paying those sand dollars. But also some of the cards score for sand dollars in your tablet. I like that you're paying with sand dollars. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it's just an excellent game. It's one of those games that All you right. can play in 30 minutes and teach anybody, but still has enough depth that if you're like somebody who's into heavier games that you're not going to be bored. Yeah. Um, and I didn't feel like one of my big pet peeves is if you're playing a game and you feel like the choices are scripted, because a lot of times lighter games, that's the problem. You don't feel like you have enough agency. But in this game, you feel like you have a lot of decisions because you could take multiple of those cards and make them work for you. It's just yeah. can you make them work better for yourself than your neighbors? There you go. So that's yeah. I'm I, I like to look there. at that too, John. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's game too, isn't it? It's not that expensive. Yeah, it was like $30, 35 yeah, or something like that. It seems like a one I'm to And one that they could expand just like a Seven Wonders. Like it, it has so much room for, and it's AEG, so they're going to. I'm sure. <laughs> you sold me on wanting to play this for sure. I, I want to check that one out. There you go. Emily <laughs> C says, love y'all. Extra validation points. And I love the y'all since, yeah. you know, we're from Tennessee. You can have so all those points, by the way. And uh, Board Game Night agreed. Love your chemistry and positivity. So in my positivity, sh John's carrying me in out. My shallow, <laughs> in, my, help me. in my shallow request for like compliments, <laughs> Meeple Town is appeasing that. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. We appreciate that. Ding, what's your number eight, my friend? My number eight is probably gonna get it's probably gonna get some uh, some beat down from John and Jonathan, maybe, because it's solo. I I think this may be higher on somebody else's it's list. <laughs> solo. If you're listening on the podcast, I just raised my red solo cup in the air. Bonfire is the I think second felt that came out in 2020. Um, the other being Castles of Tuscany, which I I enjoyed. Uh, but Bonfire if for you sure have was like Castles, the, I'm talking over you right now. Oh my gosh. I'm cutting you off. If you have Castles of Tuscany and higher than Bonfire, our relationship okay, is over. I'm cutting John off and saying, by the way, Dean, this is a two-way crossover. <laughs> it is, yes. So we can just talk about it once. This is also my number eight. There we go. Oh, oh, it is your number eight. It's I did my not number eight. That. You yeah. both only have this as number eight. I just, I, you both are out of my oh relationship. Somehow I, uh, I just left it off of here. Oh no, 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 I didn't. I, I do have it on there. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so we can just talk. So about no, this. hey, you're perfectly right, Dean. You nailed it. <laughs> This is exactly where this belongs on the list. I know John's going to have this one quite a bit higher. Uh, but this is the more complex fell that came out in 2020. And I'll go ahead and say, Bonfire is one of my favorite fells that's come out in the last uh, few yeah, years, for sure. I would say. Uh, the other one being the um, Forum Trajanum that came out a, few, a couple, two, three years ago, something like that, that I, I really enjoyed. But I, I've really enjoyed this one. So in this game, you're going to be traveling around to different islands. You're going to be 
taking these little pieces, I know you probably can't see it on there, uh, on these boards, you're going to take these little pieces and place them onto your board. And when you place them onto your board, that's going to determine how many, the, the different types of action tokens that you're going to get. And those action tokens are what you're going to use to play out different actions onto the main board and onto your board too. So you're going to be moving your guarding, guardian along the track. You're going to be traveling to islands. You're going to be, uh, what else are you going to be doing? You're going to be uh, picking up these different um, objectives from the islands to go onto your board. And then you're going to be putting portals on. There's lots of different things that you're going to do. And it's like every Feld game that I've enjoyed. And that's where you have lots of different point salary goodness, gaining points from a lot of different ways. So I've really enjoyed this one. Over to John. What do you think? What do you think, old Johnny boy? Uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite of his heavier games. It still doesn't yeah. beat Castle of Burgundy for me. I don't know that he's ever going to make one that's going to beat Castle of Burgundy for me because it's just. You guys really... are both the same person. You and Dean in this Not situation. Not really. So, this is the weird thing about me and Feld. I always said Feld was one of my like top three designers. Almost every game he puts out for me is an eight. Like, I understand that. Like, I. I don't like really you like it, but don't just go crazy. Yeah, like I like almost every field, like almost every game he's put out in the last five years. I'm like, yeah, I will always play that game, but I'm not like trying to get it to the table the way I would like an underwater cities or something like that. Um, this game, especially when we pulled it out, we were like, what is this? Because <laughs> we're so used to his games being these dry, like you know, some city over in Europe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that's, true. that's that's what most of his games are, or like Roman. There's the pink or, elephant. Oh, that thing was so dumb, too. One of the dumbest components. It um, came with two of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, In case you wanted an extra But it's one funny because, like, I hear people complain about that dry, like, no theme thing. And it's like he tried, but he made it about elves and bonfires. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, Gnomes, actually. Gnomes? I don't know. They look like little Yoda. I will say, right. though, the little meeple guys look like Yoda. Yeah. So right. I did appreciate that. They look like baby Yodas. Here's the thing about Feld that's interesting to me because I, there are a lot of people that would say, you know, this is my favorite Feld. And there are so many of those games that are different. Like Amerigo yeah. is my favorite one or Forum Trajanum or Tra Trajan or Castles of Burgundy. Like there are so mm -hmm. many different games, Bora Bora, that are people's favorites. And I think that's why he's so interesting to me, at least. Like I'm always intrigued by the things that he puts out because – it might be an amazing game to John, but I might not really care for it. But this other one, I think, is amazing. I just think that's that's pretty well, interesting. And what did not did it for me on this one was the action selection is so oh. unique. Placing those little tiles down your board in order to get action points, basically, that are very specific to what action you want to do. I, I can't think of a game that's done that. I don't want to talk a lot about it because it is up on my <laughs> list. Um, that's my favorite part of the game. That is that brilliant. Is, yeah, it's so dead gum fun. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out how to put those down. And then sometimes... You may not want a ton of the tiles necessarily. The you know, I don't know. It's just there was just a lot of really cool decisions uh, for sure in that one. Yeah. So a couple comments before we move on. Uh, there's a lot of long board games like <laughs> Link. Yes, that is very true. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you should see the title board. blades. Yeah. You put oh, title. Yeah, yeah. You can't even fit it in a calyx. The way you slide it in, it's. It, it's got like the. Uh, no. See, look at that. I'm, if, if you're look, watching on YouTube, I have to keep pointing at the mic because Jonathan, I think he's just slowly getting back further and further and further. <laughs> I'm trying to get away from John as much it's, as I can. I know. Um, I just lost my train of thought. I the just got so close to you. I smelled your musk and it was mm. just. You so smell my protein shake yeah. on my breath? Yeah. Oof. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't fit in a calyx at all. Like, yeah. it, even close. It's like six inches of overhang and it's not even, it's not even thick. Like, they could have easily made it a box that would fit in one, but instead they decided to make this stupid long. It just bugs me. I won't so I don't know John's number eight, by the way. That's yeah, I, no, no, it's my, so, so Clever Wine says I need to pick this up, but I know more money. It's true. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> All right, that's my number eight. My number seven is needs, is needs to be slid in there, Dean. I forgot. I didn't give Dean all my numbers correctly. So Dean, go ahead and is it is it no? It's your number eight. I just did my number eight. John and I have the yeah, same yeah, this, number eight, so cool. we kind of skipped your. We know I usually get them. I get it. You off. I know. I know. And by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, we do want to apologize for having to swivel the camera back and forth. Dean deemed bringing the wide angle camera. <laughs> he didn't bring it. And so, and so and so <laughs> we've got our we have ours on a on a swivel here and so we're moving it back and forth if you're on the podcast you don't care because you're not looking at us they were not prepared for three people yeah no. <laughs> i messed up the camera john messed up the mic we're okay though we're, we're making it work right yeah sure 
<laughs> so a couple things I'm going to bring up before I get yes, mine real Carpe quick. Uh, Carpe Diem, Diem, Steve brings up. Yeah, that was a really that's that's a good feld. Um, yeah, I unfortunately, like they screwed up the edition so much. They've already got a third one coming out. Yeah, it's a two year old game, and they're making a third edition of that game. I'm just just a little silly. Loves your um your Meeple Town swag there. So I guess I need to not. We're trying to do a better job. Yeah, we're, that's true. MeepleTownGames.com. You can check it out. That's our that's our swag. We're trying to do a better job of not jumping all around for those who listen to the podcast because my wife at one point said, hey, your lives are really fun to watch live and they're okay to listen to, uh, but they're not the best. So if I if I don't, uh, if we don't respond to every comment and stuff, that is why. But I do want to say, because we're talking about Fell. This is a perfect comment. Yeah, Steve, yeah Stephen, uh, it says, Fell games are so good in many ways, but immersive themes, not so much. And perhaps... Those are the last two points needed to make the eights mm -hmm. and the tens. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, yeah. That that could be right for me. It doesn't, and that's why Feld's probably higher on my list than these guys. Yeah, because I don't need. I don't feel like I. I don't need that to enjoy it, but I understand why you do. So I, that being said, I think I have five games in my top fifty that are Felds. I think he deemed. <laughs> he deemed it. Yeah, yeah. That, John. John coined that term. That's mm -hmm. true. It's like it shrewded it. And then speaking of <laughs> speaking of Dean did, so John, John Shoulder is pushing sent me his camera. list, but he sent me nine games. So I have no idea what your number eight is. My number eight is that. Oh, it is my number eight okay. Paris. Okay. okay. All right. So my number eight is a Keesling Cromer game, right? That's right. Dean, are you gonna get that up on the screen, dog? Yeah, I am. But you sent it to me in the wrong order, so it's taken me a little bit of time. <laughs> wow. All right. So, anyways, I'll just start talking about Paris. Uh, Paris is a really good game. It was one that you know, I was I was looking forward to it, um, and it kind of it met my expectations. You know that I was thinking, I'll. Uh, this is one, Jonathan. You have not played, I right? Have not, no. Yeah, and it's sad because I love Keesling and Cromer. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put Dean on the camera over here because Dean is this one on your list? It is. Yeah, it's a, okay. It's a couple up from now. Okay, because I was I was gonna say I would be surprised if I didn't. Now this is talk about table hog. This is a table hog. Yeah, the huge round circle. Round games are always table hogs. Oh, Pulsars that way. Yeah. But this game is beautiful on the table, Dean. I yeah, love sorry, it. that's a digital copy. Here we go. There you Here's go. It. It's the color, and that color yeah, does not really nice. do it justice. But it's like this beautiful, like tealish, bluish, whatever color, a kind of mixture between those. It's really good. But I mean, this game is about you're going to take a key and you're going to put it on one of these six districts, or you're going to take it from that district. I mean, from the key place in that district and actually put it into one of the what are those called? The neighborhoods, shops, boroughs, I think. Boroughs. Maybe, I don't remember. There, and there's six of those inside each district. And it's basically area majority at the end of the round. Who I mean, the end of the game, whoever has the most points in those sections is going to score points there. But there's this giant rondelle that goes around. And what's really cool about this is you can never go around the rondelle more than once. Mm. So, like, you have to make those decisions. Do I want to jump ahead and grab that tile? Because that's got really great in game scoring for me. But then I miss this score and I miss this tile. But if I don't go and jump, Dean might take it. And if he takes it, that's going to really irritate me. I think you would love that. Yeah, about it, Jonathan. that's one of my, I love yeah. those kind of decisions. It's kind of like heaven and ale in that regard. Yes. Then we're, but instead, yeah, different rounds than heaven and ale. But, but this that, one you don't. That decision of, yes, I want that. Because that's almost like a double agency there. You got to get closer, baby. I'm sorry. You just, <laughs> you got to get closer, baby. <laughs> um, because most games have it where you're making decisions like that of whether or not you want to take a spot. But then to add a second layer on top of that of, skipping something that you could have permanently is so agonizingly good. <laughs> like, yes. It hurts so good. <laughs> yes. No. Yeah. It's, it's, it is. It, I just, mm, it's, it's a, in, it's it's a, a tense one. game, right? I think it is. I think it becomes very tense. The more, <clears throat> like the further you get yes. into the game, of no doubt. Where to place things. Mm. The only knock I have is that uh, two play. I like this better at a higher player count, um, especially because the six boroughs don't change. Like there's no difference if you mm. play higher or lower. So like when I play against my wife the other night, she doesn't like combat. So she just kind of, I took over this one. She took over that one. I took over this one. She took over that. Gotcha. And, we, and it was just boring. Like I was just like, this is not the way to play this game, babe. Do you think this would have been better with some kind of Automa as the third? Yeah, I think so. That or you just block off, maybe you just block off some districts spaces. and just say, you know what? Because I'm these... normally not a fan of those, but some games you just have to. There's nothing, the way they're designed. I, th I think that a lot of times these guys, they design games for three and four and they stick two in the box. You, because cause you have to almost yeah. nowadays. Or yeah. even like they make a solo mode that's terrible just because yeah. they need to be able to put one in the box to sell it. Um, yeah, I, I felt that it was fine at two players with someone like Dean who's like, let's fight. Uh, like you and I, we would do that, right? Yeah, we would battle yeah, yeah. it out. But for players that are less likely to have that conflict then it didn't play as well because of yeah. that but anyway but you almost have to for so the for the bigger districts you know like the, the game forces you to do that a little bit because the money 
in the in the bigger districts is you get more money from going yeah. there. And mm-hmm. so I feel like it, it it guides you in that way to be more aggressive. Yeah, we have a bunch of comments about the table presence on this game. It is beautiful, but also just, let's just quickly because we need to get through this. <laughs> Emily says, uh, I think this is a really great point. She's disliking, you know, some of the 3D card components just that, that are just for show and not utility. I have that love hate relationship with them. I'm the same exact way. Like I, I do, yeah. and like, but most of the time I put put them on there because it looks so good. But then there's times like um, you're like looking around it to see what's on. The- <laughs> I was playing solo to Kinder the other day. I took the obelisk down because I got annoyed by having to stand up and. That's yeah. a, that's a big one of those. Paris though, it has almost zero table presence without that one arc though. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's not there's no 3D elements in this game. Everything's laying flat on the table. Yeah. But also you can take that off and it has the cardboard piece on the board, so you don't have to use it. I will say Barrage did it well, even though they they messed up the production of that game big time. The having the water or the like what is it a COVID brain. Um, damn, the, the water's coming down, having it tear. Watch your mouth. Oh, right. <laughs> were you just waiting on me to say damn? Is that what you were doing? <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like there's some movie quotes that should be happening right now, but it's Vegas vacation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they, they did that well because it had some verticality to it, which helped break up the board, but it wasn't so tall that you were having to stand. I think the problem a lot of times is those 3D gimmicks are... <laughs> If you're on if you're on the podcast right now, there's a comment about my massive shoulders, which is hilarious because I'm twice be, as broad as you are. Be, <laughs> they should be drawing Dean and Jonathan in because of the gravitational field. You can't tell it from the podcast as much, but my head is bigger than his shoulders are. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm showing off my. No, I'm pretty sure John shoulders. is the one who has the big head right now. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a way that we can um, kick Steve <laughs> off of the feed here? Is that possible so he doesn't build get up distracted, your, blow your head up anymore? Oh, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> so, Dean's number seven. All right, Dean's number seven. You ready? You ready, baby? <laughs> number seven is probably going to be on some others' list. Here's what I did, guys. I threw some games that I knew were going to be on your list lower on mine just so that I could be the first one to talk about it. Just kidding. You would do something like that. Franco Caput Regni is a Vladimir Suki game that is fantastic. It just is. I, I agree. love so many things about this. I love the look of it. Um, this is a game that uses 3D <laughs> cardboard elements that are actually relevant um, in those castles, like the the hunger wall, and then the cathedral they do block back there. the scoring. Uh, they do, and again, you don't have to use those. You can use them, you know, directly Flat. on the board. Yeah. You got the bridge that's really low, but still. But the main the mechanism, the main mechanism of this game is you're going to be taking from the wheel. You're going to be taking an action tile and picking one of those actions and doing the action. Yep. You don't do very many. You don't have very many turns in this game at all. That's how Suki like, does a what, lot of times. Yeah, so. that's right. That's like twelve. Pulsar, turns, yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. like what twelve or fourteen turns that you have in this game. But obviously, like in all the other games, the more like the later you get into the game, the more things that you're going to, going to be able to do, the bonus actions and stuff like that. Um, and the actions are you're going to be building walls. You're going to be building little. Um, tiles into the city you're going to be moving along in those different the cathedral and hunger wall you're going to be traveling around along the road and each of those things that you do is going to give you more and more things so it's basically you're trying to be the most efficient in this game as you can be and uh, i love this game i absolutely love this game it's fantastic yeah this is going to be talked about later on my list i'm not going to lie yeah me too yeah (laughs) sorry Uh, sorry i I talked too much about it but i'm not sure (laughs) suchi or lacerda are my favorite designer but I, I do love sushi. Yeah. Also, oh, I do too. It has eggs as a resource in this game. How uh, many games did you, out there have eggs? Did you wingspan? Did you? Um, nah, you wow, were, dude, that was quick. <laughs> yeah. So, did you uh, read the history behind that? I not to just completely put an aside on there, but I actually found that really interesting. The egg road action. I was like, yeah. Why is there an egg road to uh-huh. a bridge? I was like, this can't. So apparently, the king at the time thought that eggs would help the mortar stay longer on the bridge, and so he had villagers bring eggs for the building of that bridge that bridge is still standing 600 years later yeah so maybe he was right i don't know but that was the reason why that action's in the game they did an excellent job oh, eggs. i like that That's so good. what's your number seven <laughs> uh you're gonna have hey to emily's looking for some tips on praga out there uh, uh, steph is... hodge says i only learned it this year so it didn't make my list yeah mm-hmm. you like you liked it a lot didn't you steph we i think all did that was your number. Oh, you, you need to you need to know my number seven. It's my turn again. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I might have it right on here. I'm not positive, but um, <laughs> you don't have it yet. No, I don't have that on there at all. Actually, Ooh, this is gonna take a minute. That's okay. All right, hey, we're you gonna go ahead and start talking about it. We've actually already talked about this, John. Yeah, uh, on the podcast. Yeah, 
Yeah. So my number seven is, um, man, I'm thinking through should have made this my number seven. You can't change now. No, oh, I'm changing right now. now. I don't even care. No, my number seven is Merv, the heart of the Silk Road. Um, what I, and that's a Fabio uh, Lopiano game. And he did Ragusa, which I did really enjoy. I really did. And I know that's that's different than some other. I, I don't know. Some people I know either love or hate Ragusa. It's pretty simple, but I love Ragusa, how you can. You know, I'm not talking about that, but it's easy, super easy to teach. And you can play it with a lot of people. Uh, this is kind of cranks it up a notch, you know, from yeah. Ragusa. So this is going to be more of a gamer's game. But I really like it because my wife liked it. I mean, that, we talked about yes, that. Yes, it helps. It really it helps, helps a lot when your family likes the game. It's, it's kind of in that, like, just straight up medium weight Euro It game. is. And it's just like Praga and the, you have 12 actions. Yes. And that's it. I I like games like that. Yes. I don't, I don't know what it is. You feel like you can't do everything in a good way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it makes it makes a game that may not have as much replayability have replayability because the next time you might do a whole different path than what you did the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, this is, I mean, I really like, I love the way that the buildings work in the middle. Yeah. I like the way you're working off other people's things and stuff like that. It's just so cool. You have these different tracks that you can go up and even do a little, I don't like set collection generally, but you know, if it's part of the game, I'm fine yeah, with it. Yeah. And so I like it. It's got a little set collection. So you, there's four, I think four different things you can kind of do. You can't do them all. So like, what am I going to do? You know, what's, what am I going to focus on this game? And I just, I think it's fun. You know, it's, 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 it's not a mind blowing game, but it's a yeah. solid, it's a really solid game. And it looks beautiful on the table. Eno Tool did That's the artwork. Osprey cool, Games yeah. always does a really, yeah. really good job. So it's just what I think I'm going to find myself. Um, yeah, I'm just going to keep finding myself and, playing. And I, I'll probably talk about this later with another game spoiler alert that's on my list. But Eno Tool, like, so there's artists that I like their art better, like uh, who did Everdale again? Andrew Bosley or Michael Menzel. Yeah. But Eno Tool's art is the most functionally beautiful art yeah, in the it's industry. So slick. Like clean his the graphic design that goes along with it and the way it he pairs those together make games that look more complex easier to play there you go which is yep, awesome it's true so steph's not a fan of his games but likes zapotec which was on my list of top 10 so i'll be interested that if she hasn't liked his other ones what he did so much different or uh, steph i don't know if you have time to respond to that i'd be curious to know like what's different about that because yeah, his games can. have like some similarities and stuff anyway um Let's uh Clever Swine also corrected us that it's 16 actions, Dean. Correct. Dean was deaning the no actions. Four plus uh two is what I was going for in that T equals yeah. 16. There you it's go. my turn. T equals six not Dean. plus ten. Yeah, back Oops, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Jonathan's correcting my swivel of the yeah. thing. All right, Jonathan, give us your number seven. My number seven, I have a feeling, is gonna be uh quite a bit higher. Much higher on my list. <laughs> other people's lists. Um speaking of not failed failed the games. Yep. That's the fun game. Um, this is Feels basically like a point salad. So I've only gotten a point. What is this. that noise? There's kids Children. outside. Oh. Do like you I not can't... like kids, John? No, I love kids. Are you sure? Because you're getting annoyed. Uh, so we're in an office and there's a little playground, just so you know, behind us. Yeah, and so no, kids go playing. out and play on the playground. And it's beautiful here today. This, this is, is the prettiest court. day. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sorry to interrupt. I keep interrupting you. Yeah, I know. You said that, you know, we just because our names out. are similar doesn't mean that you get to speak when it's my turn. I know. You're right. Sorry. Um, sorry. <laughs> so this is Tawantan Suyu. Uh, I don't even know really where to begin. There's so much going on in this game. Um, it, it's really like one of a, like a heavier filled worker placement game. And so what you're doing is if you see on the board right there, there's a center area where you're going to have a, what is he called? Like a pre high priest? I high think. priest. It's a high priest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you can either do actions moving your high priest around that clockwise one or two spaces, which do like this really cool comboing effect that will use what engine you've already built to do things. Um, or you can send workers down the Pentagon, whatever that thing is. The, yeah. Um, it's, the, it's the different terraces. Terraces. There's I'm so bad three at the terraces. terminology in games. Terrace I. <laughs> terrace I. Um, <laughs> You better be quiet or we'll hit you in your tail side. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's not bad. All right. So <laughs> they uh, where you're placing them, though, it's interesting. Unlike a lot of worker placement games where you're just putting on one spot, you're putting it between three spaces. Um, and whether or not you get to activate one, two, or three of those, or even more, is dependent on the type of worker you place and how you place it. Yeah. So that is a really good little brain burner thing. So for instance, I love the that. yellow guys, if they're the first one in a section of the board, you get an extra action, which means if you place it between three actions, instead of just getting the one, you get a second one. Um, the blue ones, there's spaces that are colored on the board. So if you put a blue guy on a blue space, that will give you an extra one of those actions. 
et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so the things that you're getting from them are not overly exciting. It'll be like stone or, you know, you get to build a tapestry or you get to do some certain action. Yeah. However, the decision of where to place these and how to maximize those actions is what makes this game so good. Good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, I will say, but it didn't hit. It's not. It's not that high up there. So you got. You got to give us. Give. Give me a. Give me one or two reasons, or or do you not? Have, or so not played enough. Or? So this year for me was nothing but eight and eight and a half. Like there were no games. There was one game. There's one game this year that blew me away. My two through twelve even could have been completely flipped around. So the gotcha. fact that it's lower than yours is really not indi indicative of anything other than I had to make an order. <laughs> So, yeah. and and honestly, I've only played this one once, and I only played it at two players, and I really think this would shine more at three and four. Yeah. Because when we played at two player, what we found is, th this is one of those games that's not round based, it's more of a, like, you get to trigger the end of the game. Yeah. And I we, like games like that, you know? I do, but we literally maximized everything. Because yeah. the guy I was playing with is like me, we like to build those engines, and so we got up to the top of every track, we purchase every tapestry tile. Oh we, yeah. And Dean we didn't like that either because we, we played one game where it was the same way. Remember that's that yeah. one game we played. And, and frankly, yeah. he would have beat me, but he let it go on too long because he wanted to do yeah. all the things as well. Um, and that's what won me the game because I got to catch up because my engine built up better over time. You needed to end the game. Yeah. Yeah. And you can do that, which is great. So it's, it's not going to be such a big deal um, at two players. If you're playing with not first time players, because knowing when to force the end game is a big part of this game. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I loved the first two hours of it. <laughs> it was the third so you hour. You played more than that? Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Well, I told you we maximized everything. Like we, the whole board was filled. I mean, it was, it was nuts and it took a long time. And so I was super excited for the first hour. The second hour was like, this is really good. And then the third hour, game, it knocked it down yeah. a little bit. More. You got to play this more. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think it should be, it should not be that long. We did it. I feel like the first time I played that, I experienced something like that, um, where you can, just let it get out of control. Like you're the arc about. of the game is important to me. Yeah. So yeah. games where the arc is um, dynamic is a little better than when it's gets stagnant towards the end. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm like worried about that with fighting a little bit. That's my. Mm -hmm. oh, I said I wasn't going to mention those. I don't want to beat a dead horse on this one, but I, I would imagine, and this was me when I saw this game, I was like, oh boy, I don't think so. It just looks yeah, like it a looks lot. so busy. It's it's, it's not, not. It is you know I guess heavier you know than a lot of games, especially that I'm gonna talk about on my list, but. It doesn't feel that way. The actions themselves. None of the heavy. actions are difficult. Yes. Yeah. The but heaviness comes from maximizing. That's that. right. That's right. This is, a, this is a great game. We're Love both going to have this higher on our list. Absolutely. Who's Dr. Pepper sitting in the back back there? It's a Dr. Pepper Zero, actually. Do we get paid to, to have that in the back? Is that what happened? Millions of dollars? Yeah, this episode totally. sponsored by... You know, <laughs> Maybe, maybe. Are they board gamers, Dr. Pepper? I don't know, but if you are out there, Dr. Pepper, and want to send us money, we'll take I'll it. I'll wear a Dr. Pepper shirt on everything. I, do I don't care. Days. I already yeah. have one. <laughs> yeah, got, do it's a berries and cream one that I got for free in downtown Nashville. <laughs> Speaking of Dr. Pepper's nasty. Ooh, that was bad. I hate was Dr. Awful. Pepper, by the way. Let's just, let's just go there. Well, you ruined our sponsorship. It's one of them. You guys <laughs> like it? 23 flavors. That's way too many flavors. What are they, just stick with it, you know? Keep it simple. Keep it E&O tool. We don't need all kinds of stuff all over the place. Get this out of here, Dr. Pepper. Get out of here. For sure not sponsored by number six. <laughs> My number six is a game we already talked about. I'm going to be real brief on this. Ready? Yeah. I think that's right. Paris. Oh, yeah. Paris, my number six. We already we already talked a lot about this game. It's good. All those things that John said. <laughs> love this game. A lot of fun. Paris, my number Bro. six. That's how you do it right there. That's how you do it. Is that what you have for my number six now? I, Are I you will. back? Are you I back will. on track since yeah. I screwed up? If you up. leave that open, that would be helpful. Okay. All right. So my number six, as Dean is pulling it up, is a uh, Daniela Tassini game. It was one that I was really excited about this year. I think it was my number one uh, most anticipated game when we got halfway through the year. Yeah. And that is Takenu. We just talked about the giant obelisk that's in the middle of the board and how that can be, uh, you know, that can be a little bit annoying, actually. But in this game, I mean, what I like about um, Takenu is I like the, the dice drafting that you have in the middle. Mm -hmm. And like the, the cool part about it is like, not only are you dice dice draft, you only you're di drafting dice to go to certain sections, but the value on the matters. Not only the value matter, but the color of the die matters because it'll make could make it. You know, you have these scales you have to balance between like good and evil kind of things. And if you get too greedy at the end of the round, you might lose points. You're trying to get it in the middle um, to balance them in the middle so that you can go first next turn mm -hmm. and different things like that. So those are all really fun things and. Uh, into Kenu, but but thing I might like more about anything else is the card play in this game. 
because like I like games where you have a ton of new cards, different cards, and they're all not going to come out in the game. And so it keeps the game so fresh. Every time Mm -hmm. you play, you're like, oh, I haven't seen that card or I haven't explored using that card. So uh, I think that it's, you know, I think it's really good. Yeah. um, Steph Hodge says uh, Teo is still the best. I agree. I think Teo Dokkan is still definitely better. So (laughs) uh, Dan, I wanted to pull up Dan's comment here. Old Danny boy's in. And it is weird seeing us so close, Dan. You came in a little bit later, and unfortunately, um, Dean deemed not bringing a wide angle lens. <laughs> and so I'll just say that a couple more times. And John not having three mics. Though. I did though. I <laughs> Which did. you guys would have to be that close anyway. I so thought that I was. Yeah. I thought I had the right I, I, the mic that I brought, so I joined it for sure. Um, I John, I deemed it. <laughs> we don't do that anyway. So yeah, we both kind of made a couple of mistakes, but we're still. We're, hey, we're going. It's going good. Boom. Is it? Yep, that's your that's your. Kenny was good for me. It... He didn't like it because I beat him at it the first time. That is not it. true. Look at it because there's a game that's going to be higher on my list in a minute that I got spanked at. Really, the first time I played, woof, bad. Um, but you, the one you're about to talk about right now. Yeah, actually, the one right? I'm about to talk about after right after this. Yeah, boom. Yeah, that's the one. But Takinu is a lot like maybe it's just his games for me. I tend to like him more with repeat plays, and I just haven't played it enough. <laughs> I'm just laughing because if you're not if you're on the podcast. We're getting so many comments about my "quote unquote" massive shoulders, <laughs> and they're really not. No, John. John is a slight fellow. He's in shape. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to get even more in shape. But yes, I'm not a big guy. I think it's funny. That is the quote of the episode. I've convinced. I've convinced John everybody that fellow. I'm massive. <laughs> he likes to wear really tight shirts so that it makes it all stand out. But you know, it's true. My shirts. I'm gonna have to upgrade to a medium from a small. I think. <laughs> Because I, I what's a small? I don't think I've ever worn one of those. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's talk about an extremely good game. Yeah, so Thanks. I'm kind of sad this isn't higher because two of my top ten all time are Vladimir Suchi games, and so anything he puts out, I'm just like instantly I'm I'm gonna buy it. I don't even think about it. I just hit I hit buy it now. So uh, agreed. Yeah, um, and I think this game could go higher with more plays. I really, I really don't have a lot to add about what's like what how we've already said. talked yeah, about yeah. it. The, the actions are great. What you're doing is great. The presentation is really good. It is a little busy if you look at the art on that. Yeah. Um, Especially in the like the village spots where the buildings go, it's it's really busy. But a lot of like there was some, we were talking about that as we were playing this game, and I can't remember the other game we highlighted that has that sort of busy art. Oh man, um, that has that sort of busy art, but it's only busy until you've played it. Like once you've played it, it, it doesn't bother you as much as it as it did the first time, um, where you're really trying to figure out what's going on. But yeah. I really like, like the action. Like you, can you kind of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Quantum <laughs> C. When you look at it, it looks overwhelming. So Quantum C, you can you? Is that what you just said? <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> Sorry, I made a mistake. Um, <laughs> Sorry, John. <laughs> Well, John made a mistake. Our only <laughs> sleeves up. So. Uh, there's a there was a there was a comment here that said that I should cut off the sleeves. So I've got my sleeves rolled up. Please don't encourage. So it. now now I'm getting even more serious. And I'm not just By taking the way, shirt off. We're right? halfway through the episode. We're we're moving in that direction. So so uh, they turn off the AC to come in here. So it's getting a little warm too. Oh, that's right. Like, Steve. Yeah. Is like Sun's out, guns out, baby. Let's do it. Let's go. Oh, oh, actually, I'm making myself uncomfortable. <laughs> 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 this is going to be the longest, silliest episode. Of people oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh man. Okay, well. Are we on the rails? <laughs> yeah, no, off the no rails? definitely okay. off the rails. Okay, all right. I'm sorry that my muscles are so massive and distracting everybody. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my muscles were that size when I was like 12. <laughs> is, there, is our viewership going up or down right now? Because you know, uh, I think it went down a little. Maybe <laughs> okay. Well, maybe we maybe we scale back a little bit. <laughs> Woo, Dean, would you like to take off your hoodie? Uh, and... we, uh, no, I'm actually good. that might help. I'm actually good. Number number five is that we're at right yeah, now. Yeah, we're it. on five. Is my number? Five? We're only halfway there. <laughs> my number five. Yeah. I don't know. This is definitely not on John's. I don't think it's on Jonathan's either. I don't know if you've played this, Jonathan. Dune Imperium. Ah, no, this is one of the like. There was four or five games I really regretted not getting played. This yeah. is one of them. Yeah, this is this a, good. Paul Denon Design, who did uh, Clank, really popular. Yeah. Oh, I don't know why I clicked on that. I don't think that is actually components for the game. We're about to find out here. Oh, what are you clicking on? Uh, oh man, we need a sensor. So those are not actual components in the game, but my goodness, I wish they were. Yeah. Amazing. Well, they had deluxe components coming out for it. Oh, that's right. You know so what maybe that, they are. They, they may be the, the deluxe ones. I don't. I don't know what the deluxe ones look like. I know there's going to be miniatures involved, but. 
Yeah. I don't think those were. I think those are okay. 3D do you, do you all know whenever you open up your phone, you're you, like you want to go to an app or something, but you have that muscle reflex if you click on the wrong thing. Yeah. Dean likes components so much. He, <laughs> he just automatically like, clicks like a son. Hey, it's plastic. Click, what? Click. And he doesn't even realize it. <laughs> okay, so in this game, it, this is something I'm realizing about myself. I talked about this, I think, on a podcast a while back. I'm really digging card games that also have another element to it. So mm, sure. not just deck building, but also games like um, like Everdale that have like hand management, um, along with worker placement. Those are uh, um, Imperial Settlers Empires of the North is another one like that. Mm. This is deck building, similar to another game that's going to be higher on my list, as you might imagine. But in this game, you are going to be building up your deck, but also you're going to be using the cards in your hand to place out your um, your workers onto the board. And really, it's a race to 10 points. But how you do that for the most part, part of it is the left side track where you're going to be racing up that track and, and getting points there. But a big part of it comes in the combat. And this yeah. is what really makes this game shine, I think. Um, you're going to be gaining troops onto your little area, and then you can move those troops onto the battlefield. And then whoever wins those battles, and you also have uh, mar- modifiers through cards that you can It's play. the best part of the game. Um, as combat. you do that, if you win those, win the combat, you're going to gain the uh, combat card for that round, and that's going to be like a first, second, third place kind of thing. And usually, the first place is going to give you a point, or maybe even more points. Yeah, uh, this is a really, really cool game. I like this one a lot. Um, the solo in this one, surprisingly, is actually really well done. Yeah, you have really two, for a combat game. Yeah, and yeah, exactly, because you're playing against two different players. Um, uh-huh. You can use the deck of cards that they have or the app, but it's super simple because. It all revolves around moving up the track and the combat area and, and yep. then just blocking spots. So, like, their turns are really fast. I've really enjoyed the solo of this. And the two-player is a game – in this game, Jonathan, I know you don't like this, but you add an element, like you have an extra um, AI player. But, again, it's not difficult. It's an easy one. It, so, it really just impacts the spots. I don't mind AI players that are just, like, draw a card and do the thing. I don't like it when it's – when it's a lot, like when it's really involved, where I feel like I'm almost learning a new thing to play the game. Does that make sense? Yep, yep, yep. Yep. All right, so just a couple comments uh, as we're moving along to my number five. Uh, A lot of people talking about uh, Lost Runes of Arnak, which may or may not be later on. Uh, It's funny that there's two worker placement deck building games this year. Yeah, uh, like questions nice. about the Dune theme. Like, um, Dean wasn't into Dune before he played the game, Dean, or did you get into it? I read uh, the book before I played the game. Just because, the because of the game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know okay, it's... has anyone ever, besides, I mean, I, out I, there, has anyone I, ever had a board game get them into a book? I, I have go not. ahead and say, I also read Red Rising. Like while I was going to say, I want to read Red <laughs> Rising for that reason. It's I good. didn't know what it's Red really Rising good. was, my and then I saw that, and I was like, oh, man, that sounds right in my alley. Yeah, my wife really loves that. All right, so my number um, five, round number five is, as Dean's pulling it up, is I'm going to take you all to school with my number five, Alma Mater. Mm -hmm. Now, it made me a little nervous putting this as my number five because not negatively nor positively necessarily. um, I I, I don't know. What I'm trying to say is I haven't played it in a long time. So it could be be better or it could be worse or it could be number five. Yeah, I know. That's the problem, man. Geez, I've been having too many classes, but you know, that that's the, it is what it is. I can't play everything a week before we do oh, this I list. And I hate that. Um, but any, anyways, in this game, just got a lot of really cool features. The way the books, the books work interestingly in this book, in this game, you're paying for books. The values of the books are changing. You can get books from your opponent. So a lot of really good, nice player interaction there. But I, I think the most thing I like is that like track that goes up the left side and you have to like, get this and this and this to hit this spot and then that gives you this bonus which is, it, it's got a lot of those moments in this game where you feel clever like you mm, click yeah. click click boom i like got that. some points and that's uh that's what i like the most about this game i don't know if it's on dean is it on your list anymore no, 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 no. this was this was probably 11 or 12 on my list um this is a game that that the first time i played it, remember you beat me about like 100 points it was a lot I scored you maybe like 40 points or something in this game the first time we played but then like once you understand those combos you that you're talking me. about then it then it becomes a lot more fun. This this definitely you need to play this game more than once to really get enjoyment out of it. And I kind of feel that way for all of their yeah, Lorenzo's that way too. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Coin Bread yeah, I actually was that way for me too. Although probably less than the other ones, but I still yeah. felt that way. There you go. Number five was Alma Mater. What's your number five, old Johnny Boy? Oh, Johnny Boy. I didn't get to play Alma Mater by the way. Just yeah, so you know. know. Uh, it's a good game. Yeah, yeah. That might be on my list. 
I've actually read the rules to play and just never got to play it. Here, why don't you just have it next to you? Or does Jonathan need I to can see it better there when your hands aren't over top of it. Why can you see it better far away? Because my microphone's right here. That's why. Yeah, anyway, oh, my number go five get, is... Get your hands out of the way. We won't have this problem. All right, go ahead. Is the game I think <laughs> Dean is going to regret not playing the most. <laughs> Sorry. This is Sorry, that was really good. fast. Um, <laughs> Dwellings of Eldervale. So this is another big Kickstarter game with another gigantic, ridiculous box and stupidly good production. Um, Dean likes that. He loves all of that. Those are all things. The other thing about this game okay. is it is a Euro game. Yes. I like that. Some dice combat. Oh, so, but the dice combat is not, you know, there's games where when you lose, you don't care. Uh, no, <laughs> no, no, no. When you lose the dice combat, you I'm don't, just kidding. like, yeah, like Feast for Odin. If you roll bad. Yeah. You it's there, like whatever it you, you get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's whatever. Yeah. Um, that's kind of how this game is. It's not really a big deal. Cause I will tell you, I, I lost by not a whole lot when we played this the first time and I lost every single roll. I, I won one really? and I rolled a two and the other guy happened to roll a one. Wow. Like I, it was just the worst rolling of my life and I still barely lost. So, I mean, it, it's not like it's, it's going to cripple you in this game. Um, and, I, and honestly, I just got outplayed. It wasn't like that even contributed to me losing. It was just, I didn't play as good as the other people. So, um, but, but you in, really liked it. Yeah, I did. I was actually surprised at how much I liked it. Um, so if you see the tiles out there, there's two different types of spaces in the game. So each of those are worker placement spots. And if you notice the little tiles that are on top of the hexagon tiles, those are resources that you can either go ahead and like you can turn it in for those resources or you can bank those and attach them to cards that you acquire to make an engine. And that's what's cool, that's cool about this game is I'm interested that in you that. can build a really unique engine based on which faction you go after. Also, there's 16 factions in this game. There's eight like elements oh, wow. and each one has two factions. Yeah. And each is that one a Kickstarter of those, thing or that's like retail? That's the case. I have no idea. Oh, okay. I, I really, really don't know. But you have four different kinds of workers. And so those powers are all based around what those workers do. So like you have a wizard, a dragon, a warrior, and then five regular workers. So some of the powers are like... Your regular worker can go twice as far across the board or your wizard can land in a space with the person already in there. It, it just kind of they all the powers are centered around breaking the worker placement rules. Interesting. Um, and then there's these giant miniatures. I don't know if you can zoom in on there on that, that yellow one right there, the dragon. So the Kickstarter version, this is something I've never seen before. Those right there, you see them in the thing. They come with sound bases. So when you pick the thing up and set it back down, it senses it and it roars like a unique roar for the miniature. Instant buy for them. <laughs> It's in Dean's <laughs> cart right now. You know what's funny? I, I'm going to go ahead and let you finish, and then I'm going I'm to comment on that. I'm going to guess that you don't think that sounds that attractive. No. Go ahead. Dean. Everything I've heard about this game, um, I know, John, this is going to blow your mind, and I and I think for me too, is overproduction. Like oh, for, it is. For the game that it, it is. It is overproduced for the game it is, um, 100%. I, mind blown. I love overproduced games. Don't get me wrong, but this one just seems like over the top. For what it is, for what I've heard. This I, could have had tokens and wooden maples and been a $35 game. 100%. And this is where I... How much know, is it? I don't remember. If it you've been close. around if you've been around John and I, you know, like, I prefer higher production game. John would rather have something that, that is what you're talking about, a $30 game. That just I'd rather have someone just get a piece of paper and a pencil and just cut out some <laughs> parts. and So rolling, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. But this game Definitely seems like... Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> too much, like too much. But I've heard nothing but really good things about this game. So and it's really pretty, and everything's done really well. It it would be one thing if it was like overproduced and then not done well, but it's just done really well. Yeah. I mean, um. Go. But yeah, and it's not an overly heavy game. I expected it to be more than it was as far as the weight goes. It's probably a solid three. Like it's it is a midweight euro. There you go. That's a little bit coming. That's perfect for that all sounds like it's Dean. Dean it's Dean yeah, Valley. And like, I and I think I would love it. And at some point I'll play I'll play that with you. But for some reason, I don't know what it is, but something about this game has just not made me like super stoked about playing it. I don't know why. Dan says that I only like party <laughs> games. That's exactly right. I don't me care. Too, Dan. I don't care about it. As you can tell on this list so far, it's been all party games. He's been all about cash and guns today. Whoa! That was good. That was good. Like that. Best dad joke of the I'm podcast. not going to lie. I've been, I put that in my pocket earlier. And I was like, <laughs> I'm going to use that later. That's not true. Not bad. That's good. Not bad. <laughs> not bad. Number all right. Four, your number, it's your number four, Dean. My number four has already been talked about. We don't have to say a whole lot. To want and sue you. 
John, I think, was probably surprised about this whenever we played it at how much Stunned I did Stunned like at how much you did like it. Yeah, this is a, a game a that film. I wouldn't normally like it, but it feels so much film. like a heavy film. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I find myself, I, I like some some uh, David Chertsey stuff, right? I, oh, yeah, I've really you. enjoyed. You need uh, to play Anachrony. Roman Roll actually oh, yes, was, was so one good. that I liked. But anyway, so there we go. This is my number four. Yeah, great game. Great game. All right, so my number four, I guess I need to pull up my list, huh? Oh, It's oh. a game that we've already talked about, so let's just pull it up. Twice. You, you right? don't even pull it up on the screen. We Praga. talked about it twice. Praga. Praga Kaput Regni. Uh, great game. They've already talked about as much as things. Uh, the wheel thing is really interesting. Um, Suki just does these really great games where you, we saw, yeah. said that. Don't, don't have a million turns, but, you know, at the end of the game, when you play, if you play it right, you're like, wow, I scored a lot of points. I did a lot yep. of things. Um, so just good. building those good engines, uh, really nice design. I like the art, except for it's a little busy on the board. Um, and but besides that, it looks really pretty and and is the longest game to put together of any game I've ever owned. I don't own it, so I don't know. Dean punching and putting together those little things was <laughs> un- gluing it together. Yeah, gluing oh, yeah. it together. Yep, I'm with you. Number four for Jonathan. Yeah, so number four, you you guys haven't played number four, so I just get to do all the talking. Right. I right? bet I bet I will love this game. <laughs> this is what I'm excited to play. Um, so this one kind of came out of nowhere for me. Like a lot of these games, you know, we hear about them in advance. We you see where the designers coming out with a new game, you get excited about it. And when this one was released, I was like, it's Rio Grande Games, and it looks like generic space. Uh, we'll pass. You have to say the name for the podcasters. Oh, uh, sorry, I thought Dean did he not say it? It's Beyond know. the Sun. Did he? Sorry, say it? I don't know. I thought it for sure. <laughs> I thought it too. No doubt. Um, wait, not everybody sun, yeah. seeing our faces on this? What are all the shoulder <laughs> jokes going to do without it being video? Oh, oh, they're going to go great. Oh, okay, like, they'll be <laughs> head, sure. they'll be head and shoulders sure. for the rest. I'm sure it'll go wonderful. Oh, jokes. <laughs> so, Beyond the Sun is one that came out of left field for me, and and I honestly, I think it was a Man versus Meeple review when I watched it, and uh, one of the guys in there specifically, his tastes are like mine. He was like, "This is an excellent game." So I looked at it, and there, somebody just put that, if you want to click on that comment. It is Tech Tree, the board game. <laughs> I like that. I mean, that's literally what this game is. Is It's is a it's kind of a worker placement game, but you only have one worker you're moving around the board. Um, so not like your traditional worker placement games. But it is if you like Tech Trees in an RPG or in a space setting, whatever, and you like the idea yes, of please. determining the, che- the Tech Trees, this game is for you. Go out and buy it. Don't even think about it. Because what it is, if you look at the board right there, all of those cards are individual pieces of tech. And so you start off with level one tech. And the setting is kind of generic, like Earth is dying. we got to get off Earth. We're corporations trying to do it first, do it better. Um, but you have to progress to those levels. So you have to have the level one tech to advance to some of the level two techs and two to level three. And what it is, is you're basically creating worker placement spots that are progressively better. And so what that does is it creates a really good tension throughout the game. Because like we talked about earlier with Twanton C, my one issue with that was that the end of the game felt flat. That is not the case in this one because it ramps the whole time. And so um, you're moving around this little sideboard and colonizing planets. You're getting better technology. You have this little player board that's engine building. So it's engine building on top of that where you get to decide whether you want to be able to produce more people or more ore. Um, and we, I haven't played the advanced game yet, but the advanced game has like very different player boards um, where you had more unique powers. And so everything about this game is great. And and we I, like I still haven't seen like close to all the tech cards yet. And they're going to be very different every game based on how the players choose to bring them out. Yeah. And I love that age, that extra agency you have. Like <laughs> if you're playing a three player game and you notice the other two play, people are colonizing when you're going to go choose the tech. You just choose the ones that aren't colonizing, and you can almost block that off if you play it right. It's a lot. BJ from Board Game Gumbo oh, says oh, Dean yeah. is alive, so that's another. Just want to throw that out there in the middle of this thing because yeah. Dean is back because John hasn't gotten to talk for five minutes. So. I know. <laughs> he, he talks right now. I'm hiding my cough pretty well today too, so far, but it's going to come probably at some yeah. point. Yeah. So anyway, I think both of you guys would like this a lot. Yeah, this it's is got lots of replayability. It's just it's so solid. This is one I really want to try. The the biggest negative I always hear about this is the the look of the game uh it looks like mainly on those player mats it's just like a yeah, I've like heard a white piece of paper is what it looks that. like how much that yeah, this game is an expensive I didn't game for that no, you pay, pay, less than you pay that. for less than that okay yeah. we had a comment um i've seen it consistently for like 70 bucks on amazon yeah it seems like it's a more a little bit pricier of a game i feel like i may have gotten it on sale at some point there's a lot of dice in the box though right yeah there is like and the dice aren't actually dice you don't roll the dice at all 
Oh, okay. So oh. the dice in there are actually uh, like six sided resource dice, basically. Um, so you're, you're. All right. <laughs> DJ wanted to know, and I, this is one of those times whenever you're on the podcast and we just shifted to something else. Uh, if it was a cardboard cutout of Dean, so I was punching and poking him with my ink pen. I'm actually a Dean clone. This is Dean 2.0. One point better, Dean. One point five. Actually, probably. point five because you're probably been deaning things. So. That's probably right. That's true. <laughs> I still have COVID brain. So let me let me say this as Dean pulls up his number four. There are three games that I really wanted to play this year that I didn't, and before I did this list, and Beyond the Sun was one. The Red Cathedral yeah. was number two. Yeah. And On Mars was number three. So you know, I'm gonna yeah. Yeah, I had mine written down too. What was, <laughs> what was mine? I think mine was. Oh, I hadn't played the new Gloomhaven. That almost made my list. Yeah. It didn't make my list, but it was really and close. And Ruins of Arnak was another one. I mean, there were several others, but yeah, Lost Ruins of Arnak just—I mean, it's fine, but it didn't do anything. <laughs> it didn't do. I know it's fine. I like it. It's a good I game. Think we're going to talk about it. We talk about it just didn't go crazy. <laughs> All right, Dean. Number three. three. Number three is Project Elite. I, okay, oh, someone mentioned Project Elite thing. earlier. I dog Jonathan for wanting to put Hansa Teutonic on here. But look at this. This is <laughs> Project true. Elite. Yeah, he did. Twenty twenty release. I don't know wow. the difference between the earlier release. The uh, um, I'm pretty sure if you go to the new Hansa Teutonica page, it's the big box, and it'll say 2020. That's right. It right. does. All right. <laughs> you can have it on there. I'll put it on there for you. Um, this is a game that, uh, John, you actually like this one, too. Um, not not like loved it like I did, but this is a real-time game. And I'm telling you, I played some good real-time games. you looking games for validation? Uh, no, I don't need validation. He already got it. This is a <laughs> really, really fun game where you are going around uh, and you are blasting aliens and trying to to do these different objectives. So, like, if I remember right, the initial ob objective is you have to trap these different aliens to get samples of them to bring them back to um, to your uh, spaceship. But basically, what you're going to do is you have a two minute timer, and you're going to roll dice. You're going to try to blast through to do your objective, and also to take out those uh, aliens, and also to search and find better weapons, kind of like Zombicide, but like a faster version of it. Um, mm. But it's a little bit different than that, but it has some of the same mechanisms of it. It's a quick game, and it's just a lot of fun. Now, I, I've played three games that I think could have, that were close, to, it probably would have been in my top 20 that were real-time games this year, which is kind of interesting. Pendulum is one that I really liked, and then Sorcerer City was another one that came out earlier in 2020 that I quite enjoyed. I think this is just a thing that I enjoy. I enjoy mm. real-time games. I think they're a lot of fun, and this one uses... Um, uh, an interesting way of like timing yeah. and it's not like a constant like um you take a break it's yeah escape um, oh, okay. curse of the temple like it's a constant like pressure fest this one it's really pressure filled for two minutes and then you Relax. take a break and pressure. plan and all that so, so i love this game. i think you would like this but not love it i'm so torn so i, I play a lot of first person shooters yeah and so that's kind of like a real time board game. Yeah, I mean, I mean a little bit, but anytime somebody says real time and board game, I just like am instantly turned off. I think, I think because a lot of times board gaming for me is is something that's relaxing for me too. Yeah, sure. And it's, yeah. it's less stressful. But again, I I've been so surprised in the last couple of years about some games I just didn't think I'd like, yeah. and, and ended up being great for me. Maybe I need to try this. The only thing is the price point makes me not want to try it because I don't want to have to. Open it. I think you would. Yeah. I think you would yeah. say probably what I do. Like, yeah, it's cool, it's good, but I'm maybe not like. I mean, the reason that you would get it is of like your family or something. Would, yeah, would enjoy well, it. and like what, what he just Which said about being like a I faster, did. better Zombicide. Like, I don't love Zombicide. But what I love is when we would play Zombicide, because it's been a year since we played it, mm -hmm. I loved the interaction with my friends. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, it, that game for me is not about, it's more like a beer and pretzels game. Like, it's not about the game itself for me. It's more about the camaraderie and joking around and, you know, almost role playing the zombie part of it. Yeah. And that's why I think you might like this, Jonathan, because you still get that in the planning phase, because after those two minutes are up, there's a lot of like laughing moments, like, I can't believe you couldn't take that guy out or something. You know, like there's a lot of those mm. moments in there. It happened a lot like, in our game. As I, did, <laughs> I didn't take a lot of guys out. Actually, He's like, why am our, I doing everything? If all you the watch time? Our, our playthrough of this, which I did recently to just kind of refresh my memory, we actually were crushing it in that. Not so much in like our the, normal games, yeah. but but on camera, we were we were destroying some aliens. There we go. Let's pull a couple comments up as you're pulling up my number three. Uh, Dan says John can't beat Dean 1.0. So what chances he have with? I don't know. I mean, so far Dean 2.0 is really screwing everything up. So I've got an actually chance. I've a chance with this one. Since version point five. Um, yeah. So let's. Uh, 
Oh yeah, and a couple uh, more comments about uh, wanting to play um, Project Elite, right? Yeah, I want to play with more players. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. Be really fun yeah. with more players too. Dean and I've played it with two players because of COVID. And if you're new watching right here, we're all together, and you're like, "Why are you all together?" And we're like, "Because we all had COVID recently, so we're we're COVID. not from each other. We're either. COVID all completely no. isolated, totally I agree. random. Yeah, absolutely weren't within the 14 days or anything mm, like that. So, yeah. so let's go ahead and pull up a comment." as I'm pulling up my number three <laughs> and uh, best at Star Trek says renature is awesome. My top mm. five, my number three game, which these top three games, I really struggled with what sh this, these three were in a class of their own. Like I told Dean, like yeah. these three would probably could, could make my top 50. Uh, nothing else probably will. Um, and I'm talking about like of all time and stuff like that, but I'm not sure yet. I mean, I got to think through it, but they're the only, the only ones on the, not the chopping block, but the, the bubble, the potential, I guess. Renature. Dean, do you have that ready? I will. Yeah. So uh, Renature, look at, listen to this. I have two Cromer Kiesling games on my top 10 list. Might have to rethink your favorite design. I'm telling you. really you. like them anyway. I do. I mean, I really do for sure. And this game, this is this is what John, Jonathan, we were talking the other day. We mentioned this already. I love to find games that I can play with anyone that I that Still tickle yeah that, itch. that that scratch that itch in my brain that I enjoy and this one is absolutely that and more like I I don't care I don't I don't want to just this isn't even one of those ones that's like well I'll play it with people that no I will play this with anyone anytime this is I you love raise high enough then I don't, no I mean maybe <laughs> no I, I actually almost put it this number is the one. game he talks about too much I know I talk about yeah. it all the time you're laying okay so in this game you're, if you're um never played it or never seen anything about it. You're laying dominoes. You have to match up the animals. So I, it kind of has that nostalgia of domino ah. laying. And the, and Dennis Lohausen, there's a Dennis Lohausen, I think, did the art on this. And it looks like your grandma's kitchen or something, you know? Like, yeah. I, just, I like it. It has this, like, homey feel uh -huh. to the game. But in this game, like, you're as you're laying dominoes, then you can't. It is Dennis Lohausen, right? Yeah. Lohausen. You're, you're placing, you know, trees and shrubberies and stuff into these uh, dirt areas. And then it's area majority. It's kind of... Uh, there's different point values for these. But what's really interesting about this game I like is that if they're the same value, if two players have the same value, they're eliminated from competition, from getting a chance to win that spot. And you have these neutral tiles that don't score you any points when it comes to area majority. They can whenever you place them into it. I'm not going to get into all that. But you can you can just screw up Dean. Like, you know, there's a spot where Dean has two points. I have one point, but I get the last spot. I put a two, two in their neutral, and I get – both scorings because each tile has a higher point value and a lower mm. point value, and I get it all. It's all mine, baby. And so I think that that's really cool. I think it's really cool. There's these little clouds that you have six clouds. Talking of really tight things, you have six clouds to do a lot with in the entire game, and you might get one or two more clouds, you know, with that. But like you're just like, how do I use these clouds? Because the clouds using them, you have to give up more than one most of the time to do something. So you're like, man, I've got I can use these things two or three times max in the game probably. When is the optimal time to do it? And you can play this game in 30 minutes. That eh, could be an hour, but I would say 30 minutes to an hour. Right? Dean, what was ours about? Ours was pushing I, I said, more of an hour. Yeah, probably so. Because there this is a deeper game than you might anticipate going yeah. into it. Like there's there's a lot you mentioned a lot of the things, but there like the level of thinkiness that can come once the game starts to spread out, you have to really think about like five different areas where you might want to place yeah. uh, your your tile. So that's it, that's the part that's thinky. But this is a, this is a good game. You're right. It's fun. Yeah. So clever swine says going to buy it based on Meeple Town review. Good. I I, I I really like it. I'm so hesitant because I'm so jacked about it. I really do think people. <laughs> I do think people are going to play this. Like even Jonathan might be like, yeah, I don't really get it. Like what you like so much about it. So it's Keesling and Cromer. So maybe. Maybe I'll love it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just one of those games where I feel like I might recommend and some people might be disappointed. There's more that I just feel like this has a ton of mass appeal. I know that the people that like the games I like are going to really like this, like Twant and Sue You and some of those. But yeah. this one is one that I think some people, some people may be like, oh, this is really light and all that. But it's really interesting decisions. Dean, you liked it a lot. I don't think it's I don't think it's light. Um, it's yeah. light in rules. People, there are some people who love this game, though. I'm, I love I'm, it. In some ways, honestly, John, I'm surprised this isn't your number one game. It, I, it could have been. As much as you talked yeah. about this, like, off camera, like, just in general, and, you know, we're talking on the phone and John brings up Renature. It's, <laughs> it's been a lot. I really like this game, but I don't love this game. Yeah. The, the, so this game is um, all three are rated um, than my top three here. I rated nine out of 10 and they can change anytime, honestly. So like, yeah, it's hard. I just really like all of them. And by the time I do my top 50, 
this next uh, summer like we do it every summer, it may be on higher than the other two games. So I'm predicting it's going to be a top 10 game. For so you. did you put this no, third out of the be three <laughs> because you want to keep the uh, like people thinking that you like heavier games more than light ones? That's it. No, not at all. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, hey, so I've got a couple comments. Let's look at this. So what's going to be Clever Swine saying Hallerto, huh? Maybe a little Cloud not- Age, another guess? Let me go ahead and burst Definitely the bubble. Definitely not Cloud Age. Neither one of those. Um yeah, I that played Halto. The, I played it the other. I played it two nights ago solo, and I haven't. We haven't done a review, but I'm not super high on it. And you're I talking about Halto. Yeah, oh, okay. and, and I know there's a lot of people that will totally disagree with me. I got into a really fun conversation with a guy I like that. Like, it's one of his favorite Uva games, and uh, just not for not not mine. There's some other reasons why. Um, and I don't want to go into all that since we're just doing our top ten. I don't want to go forever. But I, I, I liked it, but it didn't do anything super exciting for me for. So, anyways, but I understand why people do like it. Cloud Age was a big disappointment for me. I'll just go ahead and say that it wasn't. Um, it was disappointing. I did not love it. I did. It's not. It's not an awful game by any stretch. It's. It's fun. It's but just, not what you expect from Fist. No. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's right. All right, Jonathan. Let's talk about your number. Wow, that game was super highly rated, huh? Yeah, well, I mean, the first one was in the. I think the first one was the top 100 all time, right? I don't know. It was like top five or something. Of all was time it? At one point. It was. Really, it was wow. really high up there. So yeah. this is my second edition game that I put on here. This is Eclipse: Second Dawn for the Galaxy. Boo! I'm <laughs> no, I'm gonna root this one. I, I've actually this. never. Part of the reason why I didn't feel bad about putting this on here is I've never played the first one. Like it yeah. was hard to find for a long time. Um, and then this thing took years to get to us from Kickstarter. It was a big. There was lots of mess with the Kickstarter for this one. But what we That's got was really good. <laughs> so this actually, you know, this is kind of Dwellings of Eldervelli-ish. Not, not any way in gameplay, but if you look at it, it's got the same hex tiles. You're building a map. There's lots of miniatures, but it's a Euro game. Yeah. I mean, that that's what it is. And kind of like Beyond the Sun, the biggest part of this for me that's so good is the tech part of it hmm. and upgrading your civilization um, so that it does unique things. But really all you're doing on this is expanding, exploring. It's a 4X game. Um, and you're trying to build your engine so that your civilization can afford more tech to do more things to score more points. I mean, that's yeah. basically how the game works. Does this um, feel thematic to you at all, Jonathan? Not as much as Twilight Imperium. Okay. Um, if you're looking for more of the thematic 4X game, Twilight Imperium is probably the way to go. And Twilight Imperium is just way more... Ameritrash, whereas this is way more Euro. Yeah, I've not played either one of them, which you th- like these are them. like really high up there in games that I want to play. Eclipse, especially for some reason, I don't know why. Yeah, I love both of them. This is this is probably where like when we say that I'm somewhere between John and Dean, this is probably the kind of games that highlights that. Yeah, yeah. because I do uh-huh. like these big grandiose four X type of games, um, and it's not just. I, I think a part of it is because. As a kid, a lot of my time was spent playing with like army men and little Star Wars micro machines and yeah. stuff. And this feels like playing those games that I made up for myself as a kid, but playing with actual rules with adults and having fun doing it. Um, and a lot of it's more about the experience. Yeah. But I will say, I have a hard time with which one I like more, this or Twilight Imperium. Just for people who are on the fence about one or the other, um, I would just say if you're more into Euros, go with Eclipse. If you're more into thematic, go with. Plot Imperium. I think they're both excellent games, but this one for sure this year. I've already played it several times now, um, and it's excellent. Yeah, I gotta get this Boom. get this one to the table. There yeah. All right, Deanie, what's your number two, baby? My number two is a game that um, is almost like an expansion release. I mean, it is a totally separate standalone uh. game. Gloomhaven: Jaws of the Lion. Uh, this is one that I had pandering actually... to the people, Dean. <laughs> You're, I, you're pandering to the people. People love Gloomhaven, and you're just like, I want people to like me. It's number six overall. Holy moly. Wow. It's already number six? Yeah. Uh-huh. I didn't realize that either. Wow. So let me tell you why I like Gloomhaven Shaking so much. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Jaws of the Lion so much. I got Gloomhaven at a really good deal over this, this last year, hmm. and I sat down. I got everything punched out, and I was like, uh-uh. No. <laughs> nope. Not going to do it. And, like, it was just really daunting. It the is. rule book was... I sat down with Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion and I was like, oh yeah, this is what I needed when I played Gloomhaven because what it does is it, is it eases you into the system. Yeah, it, It's going to um, start off with really simple gameplay. You're going to have six cards. You're going to play two of those cards. Um, one for the top action, one for the bottom action. 
and I'm trying to find like an actual picture, but everything's painted miniatures. All he is, all, see, he does that. It's the muscle memory. He just keeps clicking. <laughs> no, the it's literally miniatures. all the pictures. The components. Are <laughs> so uh, in this game, it's a dungeon crawl game where you're going to be playing two cards. One of them is going to be for the top action. One is going to be for the bottom action. And you're going to be going around um, each each like page set of pages is going to have different missions that you're trying to accomplish. A lot of times you're trying to take out these different monsters and grab gold and things like that. But I love that this eases you into the system to where you're not like fully in like, you're not fully into the game until like four or five games into this, yeah. maybe even more than that. It's been a while since I've played this. I actually planned on soloing this while I had COVID, but I just couldn't like the fog was too much. Uh, but anyway, I love my plays of this game. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's better with people, but even soloing it is a lot of fun. You're just missing out on the, like, you don't know exactly the yeah. actions that other people are going to take. That's the part you're missing in the solo. Yeah. So there you go. This would have this would have been in my top ten. Okay, you love Gloomhaven. Though. Yeah, and and it's same thing, Dean. It was so daunting learning, and we played it like three or four times with my family, and then we didn't play it for a year because of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and I, like my brother-in-law's been asking, like, when are we going to play Gloomhaven again? Um, That's good. I, yeah, but I can't. I'm just. I look at the box. And I'm like, ah, I can't yeah. do it. I did, like. I just. Do you have Jaws like, of the Lion? I do now. I got it for my birthday. So I told them I was like, we're gonna just play through Jaws of the Lion first, get us back into the system. And the box isn't so big. <laughs> like, yeah. Carrying yeah. that box That's to right. my family's house to set up, I'm just. It just. I don't want to. There's do been that. some really good deals on that game lately. Like I've seen Jaws like, for like thirty something dollars. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like it's usually fifty, and like I, I like wow. Like if it, you can get for thirty, of, pick it up. No question. Just kind of intriguing. It's a lot of fun. So uh, BJ says, good choice. There you go. But it's interesting that I said something about pandering to the people. But here in Meepletown, I guess people aren't loving it as much. Like no one's, you know, Dan, uh, Clever Swine, Wizardo. You know, like these guys are just not. Like, and and I, one thing you need to know about me, if you don't know this already, is how much I love theme. Yeah. I love dungeon crawls. I love like the story element of games often more than I do the gameplay itself. And, and so I get what. Although I get the what, gameplay of this is fantastic. I get what they're saying because I'm kind of the same way. I, this has got a good score. I enjoyed this game, but there's something, and maybe it's just the legacy of it or whatever. I just can't really get into it. Like I like it, I, and I and I feel like I should like it more than I do, but it's just like I don't find myself wanting to go play it. Is why, yeah. and so I, I haven't even bought. I haven't bought either one of them because you give us like an eight or seven and a half. Or something? I gave it an eight. Yeah, eight, it was yeah. kind of it was almost it was seven and a half eight. I, I bumped it up to it because I thought it was a solid game and I like it. And if Dean wants to play it, I'll play it. But you're not going to play through the campaign. Of this. I'm not. But, you know, I, I said this before. If, if you would ask me when I was, you know, 20 years old, you know, 18 years old in college, I would have had flipped out on this game. Yeah. I was playing, you know, Diablo and all these games yeah. like that. And like, I just love Baldur's and Gate. You're, you're too well, mature now. Is that right? No, it's just it's just <laughs> it's just a different time in my life. Yeah. No, I was referencing back to the, you know, the, the chest and showing your arms and all that because that's. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not going to lie. I, I, my back, and I'm so tense because I'm, I am trying to like, like, and this has nothing to do with massive shoulders, but I am trying to like <laughs> let, let people come in, Dean and John, to the shot, and like, it's hurting. I'm I actually, this is this episode is causing me pain, <laughs> but I'll do it for you, Meeple Town. Wow. <laughs> John's number two is? Uh, probably not that exciting for y'all. Uh, we've already talked about it. My number two is Bonfire. Uh, Stefan Feld did it again. I love his games. And Dean, I'm happy to now know that Tuscany didn't make your list and you like Bonfire better than Tuscany. Yes? Yeah. I mean, I established that whenever we did the review for sure. But I still really like Tuscany. I think it was a lot of fun. Yeah. I, 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 sorry. I, just, I was thinking that it – yeah, I don't know. But, yeah, and there's nothing really more to talk about this game. Feld's awesome. The little action selection thing is killer in this game. I, I like the gnomes. I like the race to those gnome cards. I, I like yeah. race elements in mm -hmm. games where, like, if, if I really need these points and if Dean gets there first, then I'm not going to be able to score that card. And I like the um, – what are those, like, golden or white or something? What are they? They were light-colored, natural-colored. I can't remember what color they are, Dean, but you know, those gnomes. The apprentices. Uh, okay. The apprentices. And that's really cool yeah. because when you get to that first – then you get as another action. And that is huge in this game. It is really big. So I tend to like those games where you have those, Competing like, let me get here first and compete yeah. there. And well, especially in a field where there's not normally a lot of direct conflict yeah. or interaction, that does add that little That's exactly right. That, that is right. That's what's so yeah. brilliant about it. That's what I'm saying. That's what I love about some of Feld's, you know, stuff that he does. And he did it really well in this. I mean, this is pretty up there for a Feld game for me. You know, it's not like my favorite or anything, but like, I'm like, wow, this is really good. Just top, top three for you, maybe? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know about that. 
I mean, I love failed games. <laughs> yeah. Maybe top five. You know, we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens. We need to do our felt list is what we need to do. There's uh, Dan giving me some affirmation, saying Bonfire, another winner, John, which we all thought Bonfire was a winner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what? I think we can learn a lesson. We're all winners here. No. (laughs) Bonfire is the winner. BJ's got on his shelf of opportunity, so he is uh, thinks positively like Dean does. I go back and forth on that. Right? You've got that. Well, it was shame one year and then opportunity the next. It's, it's returned to shame now. <laughs> so. so Clever Swine said he was about 20 when the older Dungeon Crawlers came out, like Hero Quest and stuff. Maybe that's it. Maybe I got my fill. Uh, Maybe I just, I mean, I played tons of those types of games. I mean, you know how many times I beat Diablo 2 and stuff like that. I played it so much on the computer and all. And like, maybe I just burnt out. I don't know. I was going to say, it could go both ways. It could be nostalgic for you if you like those things, or it could be, that's exactly you've already right. done it in the video game format. It's somewhat so nostalgic. Why, why play it in the board game version? Yep. All right. You're number two. Yes, sir. <laughs> you like that? Yeah, I did. Um, uh, so my number two is Whistle Mountain. And y'all played this. I didn't think y'all played it because it wasn't on either of your lists. We just played it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Last week. I didn't like this one that much. Is it? Okay. No, you're wrong. I know. So <laughs> He is wrong. We, That's we, right. I've Jonathan, played it once. It's why it's not Jonathan nice. and I agree a lot, but there's occasional games. Occasional games. Where it's just like, just yeah, like And I'm always surprised by that because I just assume if I like it, you're going to like it. I, I liked it. Like, it's a solid game. It's fine. Okay, so I just want for everybody out there to know that this is his reaction the first time we played Grand Austria Hotel, and now he doesn't stop talking about Grand Austria Hotel. No, uh, no it wasn't so. my... No, I liked Grand... <laughs> I gave it a... I gave you're Grand, like, yeah, it was good. I gave it like an eight. And then, like, another play of it, and you're like, oh my goodness, this is the best game ever. <laughs> I'll play this again. <laughs> I'm just saying maybe your first reaction is not the one you should trust. Maybe. Maybe. The length of this of this game, though, is the reason why John did not like this. It took you a long time? An hour and a half. Okay. It took us to three players by an hour and a half. It okay. just seemed like we were doing the same thing over and over. Like, I wasn't getting that excited about, like, Any it, it wasn't ramping up. Like, yeah, the, I mean, yeah, you can get machines that get a little more powerful, but I just I felt like it was one of those where by the time I was an hour into it, I'm like, uh, let's just. End but this you're game. you're not a big fan of like five tribes in Istanbul and those types no. of things, right? Okay, so if you like like in it, it, the gameplay is not like five tribes in Istanbul. But what I'm saying is, if you like Istanbul, like, if you like midweight euros that make you think, and they're different every time because of the way the components play on the board, then this is the game for you. And for me, the games I like most are heavy euros. I'm a heavy euro player. However, with my family, what I get to play more of than heavy euros is like these right in the sweet spot midweight euros where my family can learn the system and we can play the crud out of it. And this game has more replayability than any I can remember in recent times. So if you're looking at the board here, what you're doing is there are two different kinds of worker placement spots. If you notice the notches in the board around the outside, those are all places where you can put your airships. Um, you have three different sizes of airships. One is going to be a single uh, square. Then there's a double square and a triple square one. And so when it doesn't matter what size the airships are when you're placing those outside spots. What you're doing is you're buying scaffold. You're getting tech tiles. You're getting um, machines to put on the board. But then what's really cool is if you look at that middle section of the board right there where all these squares are, you're going to be building scaffolding out there. And building scaffolding is what allows you to put buildings down. And it also scores you points for how you can match those up adjacency-wise. And those things also have symbols on them that are resources. So you're going to put the scaffold down and then you'll be able to build these buildings you'll see over on the left on top of them that are either two by two, two by three, or three by three. And when you place an airship on the board, you can either place it on a machine or you can place it in the air next to scaffolding machine and you get everything adjacent. Yeah, it's in, that part's interesting. So it's kind of like in Lords of Waterdeep, how you build buildings on the side and you can use these extra buildings to make the game different every time because you get different resources for that. But on top of that, it's got this spatial element to it when you get to build the board. So it's like yeah. an extra layer of player agency where you're getting to build out the worker placement spots. And so you can really host somebody. Like yeah. if somebody really, because this happened in, in the last game we played, we, we weren't thinking about it. We were just trying to score points and we blocked off all the coal. Yeah. All of it. There was no coal on the board. And so we are like, wow, how do we build buildings now? <laughs> and so if you were really trying to build some buildings, if that's what your power was, was to get points off of building buildings and stuff, um, yeah, it, you can really hose somebody in that way. And it's just interesting how every single game is going to play so differently based on 
where you can place the buildings on the central board and what different combos you have. Because in the beginning of the game, we had some great combos. Yeah. But as you build the board out, the water rises and it floods these machines. So you can't That's use my them favorite anymore. part, actually. And so the good combos we built early didn't matter anymore. Yeah, and where we've right. been looking out for number one to place just points later in the game, we screwed all the combos. Yeah. And I was like, man, if I had thought this through, I would have just done this instead. And that would have allowed a different combo to come out that would have benefited me more than the other two guys. Yeah. Um, and so that's cool to me. Like, I, I just love the idea of building your own worker placement game. This game gets, uh, you know, we have some comments about, um, I like it a lot here. So like, yeah, I, this game gets a lot of praises. Well, and honestly, so after I played this, I was like, I love this game. I was like, but am I overhyping it in my head? I had that thought. I literally had that thought. Yes. And so shout out to Luke Hector on, uh, I don't know if you guys watch his stuff. The Broken Meeple. Yeah, The Broken Meeple. He gave you all a shout out not too long ago. did, so yeah, go check out. I Broken watched Meeple. his review of it, and he's way more ecstatic than I am. So I was like, okay, validation. I'm not, <laughs> this isn't just a, you know, need to play it more. Oh, there's a lot of people. Jeremy Howard, I think, has this one really high. He liked it a lot. Yeah, and it just, it's one of those games that just, it spoke to me. Like, yeah. and I feel like that hour and a half thing, that was the first play at three players. I feel like even with my family, who sometimes we can have some AP, we can get this down to an hour. Maybe. I, I it it no all doubt. depends on how you're building the scaffolding. You yeah, know? you can it, force the end game. That's right. And, yeah. and if you're taking a long time to put machines out that are going to make the water rise and take out your meeples or whatever, then it can take a really long time. And I think with more plays, obviously, like a lot of games, it's going to take a lot less time as you go on. I really like this game. I think it's a lot of fun. I think probably with more plays, it would have made my list. It's just I've only played it once. So There you go. So it's time for number one. But before number one, I just want to make a comment. See a comment here that says John is almost always right as today. Who, so, who is this Wizard of Foz? Did you have uh, is, is your this, wife on here one make a comment? One of my favorite persons. <laughs> I don't think John's wife would say that actually. <laughs> no, <laughs> she wouldn't. She would not. <laughs> she knows his ego's already too big. <laughs> I'm so, so big. All right, my number one, baby. This is not on anyone's list. So this is going to be a brand new. There it is. You are pleasing. He's pandering to the people. Is How pandering. is this pandering to the people? Everyone loves this game. It's been on no. the hotness for like since it came out. Yeah, because it's a really good game. <laughs> it's Lost Runes of Arnak. Going back to Podcast what I said earlier, people. deck building with worker placement is something that I enjoy a lot. Endless Winter is going to be a really, really high game when it comes out because <laughs> I, I just love, I love how those things interact. That you can either, you know, place a. It is good. You can you can place into different spots. There's a lot of th different things that you can do in this game. You can go exploring. Uh, what is that that I'm just looking at? That's not the game. BJ says pander, pander to the people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you can go uh, researching up this side of the board that we're looking at right now, and that's going to allow you to get points as you go up and also gain the bonuses from the side along with points. Um, you can do some exploring, which if I remember right, was kind of one of John's favorite things where you – are uh, exploring these new worker placement spots that get better and better, but then they have monsters attached to them and you have to take out the monsters off of that, which is all, it's a euro -y game, yeah. but I still think it, it feels thematic and I really it love, was fine. It was I good. love the exploration of this game and just that gameplay, it's my jam. Now, a lot of people, I, I, I realize that I'm probably very much in the minority a lot more people seem to like Dune Imperium than they like this game. I like Dune Imperium better than this. Yeah, it has more player interaction for sure. Dune, the combat Dune was way better. I really, I mean, really added to it. Yeah, this doesn't have any of the combat, yeah. but it has a lot of the same, the similar things. I also like the cards in this that you're going to be buying up at the top. So you have these artifact cards and then the other, uh, I forget what they're called, the other cards. As the game goes on, you're going to have those blue cards that come out more often that are you have to use the time to, I think, the compass tokens to buy those, money to buy the other ones. As the game goes on, the one gets kind of phased out, the one that you spend money on. But the ones that don't get phased out, when you buy those, you use them immediately, but then they also go into your deck. Yeah. Now, another thing a lot of people, I think that, John, you might fall in this category, people don't love in this game that you don't go through your deck as much. Like Dune Imperium, you go through your deck a Agreed. lot. Agreed. Uh... Um, this one, you're not going to see your cards nearly as much. Yeah. However, there are cards that will allow you to get those out more and to like thin your deck out a lot more. So you're going to have a much thinner deck in this game than you are in Dune Imperium. I love it. I think it's fantastic. How Maybe you just said this and I blanked out, but how, does, how exactly does the deck building interact with the worker placement? You play. So when you play cards, um, they're going to have different... Uh, abilities on them. So like a, a one time, I might play a card that is like a, a free one time, give me money or something like that. Okay. But then you have other cards that are going to allow you to like thin your deck out, things like that. But you can also separately 
play car, play your worker placement into those spots. So it's a little bit different. Doing Imperium, okay. you play your card to play your worker. In this one, you don't have to do that. You can play actions on your card or buy cards, or you're only going to be taking one action on your turn. So you're just game. So trying to debate to whether I, I, you should play this card or Dean might make this, take the spot that I want. And all that's that. right. I was just curious if it was anything, because like it's not really a deck builder, but Underwater Cities, I know I talk about this all the time because it's you know amazing, but... It's not a deck builder because you're drawing those cards randomly, but those cards interact with the work replacement spots. I just was curious if this game had any of that where it's, you know, the spot you might go to is depending on which card you play. That kind of deal. No, Dune Imperium no. very much is that way. But, is it? So I, might not, like, I might like Dune Imperium. You might. I, I actually think, I think you would like Dune Imperium quite a bit, John. Okay. Yeah, so a few comments. Um, Indiana Jones, the game. Oh, Dan Palmer saying, Arnak, Dean sells out. So how about that? <laughs> Dean's, Dan's, always, Dan's always got my back. Uh, Dan and me are boys. Tell game. you what. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, Nick Hayes just popped on here too, by the way. I was going to say, he just want to say hi. At least he made it for number one. So he can go back and listen to the podcast, uh, Nick, or, or watch this later on. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so there's a lot of people that are, are wanting Arnak 2 here and they just can't get a hold of it or it's like stupid prices. So. You know, that's true. And then some people like, hey, it, typically not my game, but I also enjoy it. I, that's how I feel. I like the game. It's fine. I just didn't, I just, for me, I didn't get like this, like game of the year type thing, like number one. Like that just sounds, that's just for stupid people. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What is no, your number one? I'm I know. Curious, you can right? bash me. <laughs> I, we have to be careful. I got it. We got a recent comment that said that we were elitist because we were, I think they misunderstood our humor oh. <laughs> that we actually are totally joking about this. So, or, or maybe because you're I, a bully. I know I am a bully. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I know it was, it was just not number one for me, but I get it. Like it's super mass appealing. It has some really fun places. So I understand why everyone likes that. You game. can't help for, but be a bully when you got shoulders like that. That's right. That's right. It's just, it's what happens. Um, yeah. So anyways, and BJ says that his ranking is <laughs> Arnak 1, Dune 2 and Arnak 3. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I, get I, it, I yeah. love that. I want to see more of those type of games, though. That that is kind of becoming my jam. I love it. And, and uh, it doesn't really have to even be deck building, just as long as there's like cards with abilities on them that also. Yeah, like Everdale is, is, yeah. is one that, that kind of fits in that category for me, even though it's not deck building. I do like cards. Renature <laughs> game of the yeah, year for yeah. best at Star Trek. And hey, it's all the protein <laughs> shake. That's right. That's it. That's what that's what happens. All right. So my number one is kind of boring, honestly. Uh, we've already talked about it twice. Yeah, it's to want and sue you. Um, David Cersei is a, a great. Uh, I mean, I guess we'll pull it up. But no, who cares, Dean? Let's go back so everyone can actually see us. You know, who cares? Um, <laughs> this <laughs> game, you know, this game is is phenomenal. It's what everyone said. It's so fun to like place your meeple and try to get it around other meeples. But what's also so brilliant is every meeple has a bonus thing yeah. they get. So like you're now. If you didn't have a player aid, this game would be confusing and frustrating. Mm -hmm. But the player aid's perfect. Yeah, it's great. You have to have it. But you go, okay, the red meeple allows me to get another worker back that's not a red meeple. I get to draw one of those warrior cards that Dean loves. He loves those warrior cards, don't you? Dude, I hit those warrior cards a lot too. He's just like staring into Dean. If you're listening to this podcast, is like looking at the screen or something. He looks like. He is a cardboard standout. Or like I'm he's some kind the, of a weird. <laughs> you look like you're some kind of a weird clone or something like. I'm that. reading the comments on there. There's some good. It's some gold on there. Yeah, I mean, there's no. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Oh, the protein shake stuff or what? Are you talking about the other stuff? No, Nick Hayes uh, said. Thank you. Whenever I hear John, I think that <laughs> I think that dude is elite. Uh, yeah. Nick, wait till you meet John. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Maybe it'll enhance that feeling. Maybe we need not. To, maybe see, not. We need to have Let's a Maple Town Con whenever this COVID thing is over. Yes, I agree. With that. So Dan has my back, and BJ has Dean's back. So Dean, BJ says that I'm pandering to the crowd for those. Who, it's, <laughs> is he wrong? I bet that you're. No, I'm not. I don't. I don't that's I, interesting. I'm not saying Dan's wrong. <laughs> I mean, Dan, BJ, brought to you by the letter T. <laughs> oh, by the way, speaking of Dan, says good number one, Johnny Boy. <laughs> Is Dan this is what we need a to, bot account? I, maybe, oh no, Dan! No, Dan loves John. Dan Lee. and BJ should duke it out. Just for because, who loves you most? For who love? Yeah, for who's yeah. the best? <laughs> How about that? If it, oh, hey, what we need BJ to do is my biggest fan. I got gotcha. you. What we need right. to do is we need to BJ and Dan. We should get a game night together sometime. Sometime we'll go to a con, and me and Dan, me and Dan. I just put Dean and Dan's name together. Me and Dean. Nope. Me and Dan will play Dean and BJ. 
I think that would be awesome. Yeah, you got to play a team game though. So you got to play some like Roman Bones or uh, I don't, I don't want to brag for. Oh, and then Nick Hayes can come and play with us too because he likes giving grief, like hanging out with my buddies. That's what we do. That's <laughs> yes, all we do. That's all we do. BJ <laughs> is the the strike champion. I, I want to throw oh. that out there. So if we're gonna play strike for that game, I'm all. No about way. It. I'm no way. I'm playing BJ. <laughs> There's no way I'm playing BJ in strike. I'm definitely gonna lose that. Um, I was going to pull it's up another comment. It's a skillful game. So our buddy Keith couldn't put 10 games together because he hadn't played anything. New. I get it. Uh, COVID's really screwed up. Whenever I'm you get those vaccines, Keith, I can uh, help rectify that. Yeah. Hey, there you go. That's true. <laughs> that is very true. Um, yeah. Anyways, but David Zerci, yeah, we got some. He's so awesome. This game is good. If you yes. like David's games, this game is great. And it, He's, this, this game is a, an engine all over the place. Yeah. You build this engine, this oh, the weaving engine, this little engine, this little engine. Like You're always building engines, and it's really fun. And I will say – you know, when you play an Uva game, you know what you're getting into. When you play a Feld game, <laughs> you know what you you know what you're getting into. When you play a David Turksey game, you don't. That's true. He is he's got such a breadth to what he does, and he does so many solo games. He's he's like he's if you see his name on a box, he's got his name everywhere these days. I feel like every time I see a game, there's David Turksey somewhere on there. He's he's so he's done he's, the solo mode. He's helped design it. He's completely designed it. Because he did anything from anachrony to dice settlers. Yeah, like I'm, I'm just, to, to a game that Dean and I are about to do, Venice, pick yeah. up and deliver with Andre Novak. Like that's uh, excavation Earth. I played this year was good game. I didn't, I didn't put on here. It's an economic game. Yeah, like he, like so. I love David Turksey games. I've not played one that I did not like because I think he's an excellent designer. But you can't just go into it thinking I've liked David Turksey in the past. No, so you're right about it's, that. It's not that's like right. Uva or Feld. No, you you're right. You're getting into he's it, so you really need to look at it. But yeah, you know, Roman Roll actually could have made my top ten. It was it was seeing. I haven't played that one yet. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. That's for another time. But I I, I think Roman Roll was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, and the solo is fantastic. Nick, we would love for you to come to Tennessee if you could figure it out. <laughs> that would be Are awesome. there gang fights breaking out? In well, the G chat? Da BJ <laughs> said, "Dan, meet me in the back alley tonight. <laughs> yeah. Bring your gang, and I'll bring my crew." <laughs> And Dan, Dan said, I'm up Just for like that. like the sharks and the so they're they're ready gonna to go. dance fight. <laughs> John versus Dean crew. I can go ahead and tell you that we should make Kobe a name Dean for is not going to be very up to the challenge. <laughs> We've got to make a name for ourselves. I'll be, I'll be coughing in the corner. That's true. <laughs> the you, if you can't take the trash <laughs> out, you're in trouble. All right. Number one, Jonathan. Ready? That's right. Leaving the coffin. Am I right? Oh. And for the best game of the year. No. Hey. Oh. <laughs> this one that's sitting under my bed right Talk now. Talk about elitism. Um, yeah, you know what? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little sort of fanboy, so everything he puts out, I'm interested in. There's only been one that's really fallen flat for me from him, um, and that was What's that? Escape Plan. Oh, yeah. Um, this is on Mars, by the way. Oh, yeah, about. yeah. Sorry, on Mars. Well, I mean, I said Lacerda. This is the only game he put out this year. I will say, though. No, that was no, the latest comment. What about that, what about that Mercado <laughs> game? It's not out yet. Oh, my bad. Yeah. My B. It'll be a 2021 release. So it'll be on your top ten, probably. <laughs> um, it's more of a meaty filler, though. It's not like it's it's not like a full game. Um, although I guess technically I could have put Kanban EV on this list because the second edition, third edition of Kanban came out this year, and that's, that's also true. A um, but they didn't change it up enough for me to be able to, <laughs> to, to explain that away. But in this game, you are on Mars, <laughs> so you're 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 kind of playing um, terraforming Mars. What was the Matt Damon movie where he's stuck on Mars? Yeah, I just watched that for the first time not that long ago. Oh my goodness! Oh boy, you just keep talking and I'll brain. With it. Okay. Uh, anyway, you're you're trying to survive on Mars, basically, but you're building a colony. It's it's not like terraform the Martian. Martian. The Martian. Yeah, there you go. I, um, <laughs> I'll just throw you off. Me off. You do. <laughs> I'm sorry. The off topics. I'm gets sorry. Me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, in this game, you are not terraforming Mars. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. You, you kind of are. You're, you're building a colony on Mars. But the really cool thing about this, and what I love about every Lacerda, for those of you who've not played a Lacerda, they are heavy games. There's yeah. no doubt about it. They are heavy games, but they're heavy in strategy more than anything else. And what I love about his games is I love games that give you bonuses. A yes. lot, a lot like, uh, like Grand Austria Hotel where you just, you do a thing and not only do you do that thing, but it gives you another thing to do a third thing. And that's how his games are. And that's what makes them heavy. So the, the thing I like about it though, is there might be 10 bonus things that you can get in the game total and you can get them from three different things that you do. And so it's less about, it's it's not difficult in knowing what all you can do in the game. It's difficult in knowing how to do it well. Um, and so in this game, what you're doing is you're placing workers. It's a worker placement game um, to do different actions on Mars. So you're building out Mars and you're, 
Well, that was a long. Did you fall asleep? That was a long. <laughs> what, just, what just happened? You just, you, you just froze. Like I'm I thought, actually, I'm actually a hologram, and it, it just we had some lag there for a second. Dude, like I actually, I think I got scared. Like, I, I thought the Matrix glitched for a second, and I'm like, oh my gosh, um, I have been in this simulation this whole time. In front of I have a two and a half year old, so I have two and a half year old brain as well. Okay. Um, yeah. Wow, I thought I, I thought it was it. We're in a simulation, no. and that was fun. Yeah, and actually, simulation you know what? Crashed. I think that I think that you, we are. We are, in and a that you just pretended like you weren't. <laughs> I think there's something's happening here. Simulation. Here, here, tell me this. Simulation. Let's go back to on Mars. Mars. Tell, <laughs> tell me, yeah, tell me this about on Mars because the people want to know. Okay, how heavy is this thing? It's heavy. Four point so six three. You want to? It like, is not four point. Okay. Okay. Right. I think there is to me. There is a difference between yeah. um, heavy when it comes to depth of strategy and heavy when it comes to complications. Yes. This is not like Lisboa to me is more complicated than this game. This game to me is deeper than Lisboa. If that makes sense. Okay. So but if we're gonna teach it, if you're gonna teach it to it's a forty five gamers out there, forty five minute yeah, teach. It's a forty five minute teach. Okay, I don't want to learn it. Yes, you do. You do. Probably. We're gonna play this game. Probably. Um, you're just saying that because you bought it and you know that I'm the only one that will play it with you. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. No, I have several people that play with me. It was good that I you don't care they play it. No, he's talking about me. He, no, oh, okay. Because yeah. he, Dean's thinking in his head, he's like, well, if we play with Jonathan, Jonathan would probably just have his copy set up at his house. If my copy is ever going to get played, Johnny Boy's got to play with I just me. need to know if I need to sell it or not. That's the thing. Oh, you got it? For super cheap, and that's why. Oh, okay. I was like, I could get yeah. rid of this, no problem. And yeah, so yeah, for I, sure. Yeah. But the cool thing about this game, as far as the work replacement goes, since we got cut off there, since I went into the The Martian. Um, is you can only place the workers on one side of the board or the other. You have the have Mars itself, and you have space where you're like your space station is. And there's a shuttle that moves back and forth. And the beginning of the game, it goes back and forth every round, so it's really easy to go back and forth on which worker placement spots you want to put. But as the game expands, sorry, <laughs> getting so wide eyed. As the, as the game if the game goes on. It goes to being every two rounds Can't that it moves, that. and then every three rounds that it moves. You're just trying to distract me, aren't you? <laughs> um, and so one of the big decisions you have to make is, am I staying on Mars, or am I going back up to the space station? Because you can really screw yourself later in the game when you really need an action on Mars, but... <laughs> What on earth if you're on the podcast, on? we're trying to distract Jonathan as he talks, and, and it's so working. We're doing really all kinds well. of dance moves, and I think that's weird the thing that things and all that kind that's of. That's the thing that interests me, though, Jonathan. That interaction between like the space station mm -hmm. and the, the planet itself. I think it, it, reading through the rules that seemed very interesting. I think. Yeah, and that's that's really the crux of the game is how you time that. Okay. Um, if you do it well, you'll do well. If you don't do it well, you will not do well. Yeah. I mean that that's there you go. that's where it is. But it's also cool. There's just I, I just love the bonuses. So like you know, you go up to this place in the space station, you get something that's going to help you when you get back to Mars, and vice versa. And so the interplay of the spaces on the board themselves is really good. I love the, the screen printed. Oh my maples. gosh! Get oh yeah, the production is really good through the roof. Man. Yeah, I mean it's Eagle Griffin games, so you're gonna have to pay yeah. through the nose for it. But it almost made Dean's list because it <laughs> gets the, the box and looked at the components. She's like. Oh, I also man. have Rococo. Oh, yeah. Roco oh, eight and a half see, out of ten, okay. at least. I'm going to say if Rococo, if I'd have been allowed to put that on here because it's an old game, it would have been number two. Yeah. Wow. It's really yeah. good. Yeah. I, and I've just sold it, but I think it's a lot of fun. Well, real quick, Jonathan, on Mars versus Terraforming Mars. What's better? Mm. Ooh, that's a hard one, huh? Mm. Jonathan fell asleep again, for those of you who can't Jonathan can see. Jonathan simulated glitched. <laughs> Look at that. He's saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. There it is. I've, I've played Terraforming Mars way more because the app. So I think I would lean Terraform Mars just because I know it better. Um, and because there's more variability in it, since there's, you know, hundreds of cards, and variability yeah. is something that speaks to me. But, I, I mean, Terraform Mars is, like, number 10, and On Mars is, like, number 15 all the time for me. There so, I mean, go. it's it's not like it's that far off. Yeah. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We are going to we are going to have John tell... The Dean's List. We're going to have <laughs> John tell us how to get in touch with us, close out the podcast, then we're going to spend some time chatting on here. This has been quite the lengthy... Quite the length of time. That's not a big deal. It's been good. It's, if, no, no, no. I, it's fun. Hey, it's good times, right? But I just want to end out the podcast so that we can get on here and chat with you guys for a little bit. If you enjoyed our video and want to become a part of Meeple Town, subscribe to our channel. We would love for you to subscribe to our channel. Hey, if you want to get some sweet swag like we have, go to MeepleTownGames.com. Um, we are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Meeple Town Games, and we're Board Game Geek Guild 3407.
Thanks for coming down to Meeple Town. All righty. Let's see some of these comments and questions. Let's, yeah, let's hey. see what's going on. Oh, the Dean's list. How do you oh. like that? Huh? Does that mean that was the best list? Is that what I Maybe. I'm... Hey, yeah, you guys go ahead and say whose list you like the best. <laughs> That's not going to be mine. <laughs> I'm not on here enough for them to well, just suck up to me. No, so. a, decent amount, a decent amount of overlap on here, too. Except for mine. Except for Jonathan's. Yeah, yeah that's right. I, was gonna I, say, I like your picks, Jonathan. But, you know, I, I think that people might not because feel, I feel like your picks maybe aren't as more popular. Deep dives. Well, no, they're not as popular, so people might not have played your games as yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, like, like I would Dude, say. What? That's crazy. No, look at his. <clears throat> I disagree with that. What do you mean? Okay, look I, at this. Okay, here. I, I think Jonathan has the best. Eclipse? Oh, uh, well. <laughs> Eclipse is crazy. Like, uh, popular. Eclipse is super popular. That's true. On Mars Mars no, you may, okay, I retract my statement. On Mars is popular. I Take retract myself. All right. Um, there we go. We Santa won. Monica was really popular when it came out. You guys can ask if anyone Boom. wants to. Boom. How do, I don't understand how you did I, a list and said someone else's list is better than you. There's a ton of games on Jonathan's list that I haven't played that I, I really want to and feel like they'd make my list. There, Nick, good list. Nick heard the top three, and he says that Dean wins based on that. The top number wins. There you go. I can't disagree with that because I haven't played Arnak yet. Maybe, maybe I would love it because, I mean, my number one game of all time is a deck builder. So number one, BJ says is Dean's list. Number two, Dean's alternative fix and Dean's rejection. <laughs> I like this BJ guy, even though he's not picking me, which is where's Dan at? Hey, if where's Dan? At? If you don't know BJ, by the way, um, board game gumbo that should be coming back soon on Tuesday nights is fantastic. It's the best live show on all the internet. It's good. You know, I think I've seen him in like little short pieces of the uh, dice tower when they do the what is that called? Like board game breakfast or something? And they like go to all these different contributors. I think that's where I've seen that board game gumbo. Before. I haven't watched board game breakfast in a minute. I haven't either, but I, I feel like that's where his, his podcast name is. Dan right? says, I'm going to say Johnny boys, but people are going to give it to him for that. Thanks Dan. Hey, but see, you can call me Johnny boy as well. Huh. So <laughs> you can say that and be, so have two out of three shots of being right. So, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, interesting. Um, Question for you. So, any questions y'all want to ask? Oh man, what is your in order to answer one? that question? I have to talk about why games are my top one hundred because it's different than you guys. Yeah, so, he also, oh, she also, that's right. She also that's right. Yeah, so when I, I so one. most people when they do a top one hundred, it's like what I want to play the most right now, and mine is uh, based on number of plays as well. It's more of like a Hall of Fame, and I've played the crap out of Marvel Legendary. Like my buddies, that's what we played for years. Um, and so while I don't think it's the best game in the world or anything, it's just got so many good memories attached to it. It's my number one. It's my second most played game of all time. Wow. And you put and you put Catan in that list as well. You're yeah, so Catan for me is like a six and a half, but it's like my number 30 all time because yeah. I've probably played it 500 times. Yeah. Something along those lines. Wow. Because we didn't know anything existed for years other than Catan. Like that's, that's all we played. Um, and so I don't feel comfortable putting a top 100 that. together where it's like the game I've played the most ever isn't even scratching it. Because yeah. it would probably be my 400th favorite game of all time, you know, just based on ranking. Right. Right. Yep. Well, let's see. Oh, Nick says he just discovered Feld, Castles of Burgundy and Merlin. What is your favorite Feld? Wow. Castles of Burgundy. Mm. Hands down. That's I do have favorite. Merlin now. I have not played it yet. I'm with Jonathan Castles of Burgundy. It's not Merlin's close. good, but I feel like you need the Arthur expansion. Um, if you don't have the Arthur expansion, it's too luck driven for yeah. me. That's why I picked it up, just because I've, I've heard that as well. Yeah. We're going to have a Feld series maybe at some point this year. You should do, like, if you ever do live plays or decide to do live plays, you should do, like, a Feld marathon. Yeah. And just play we thought about that. Uber, Mel, Uber, Uber one, and Suki. Uh, you know, yeah. the, there's so many people. Amerigo is really up there, by the way. I've Amerigo's not played Amerigo, Amerigo yet. Is That's awesome. the one. And, you know, it's not in print. And yeah. so it's not in print anymore. Y'all said something about it months ago. And I, I knew this was going to happen. I could have gotten it for $30. I know. That's what I did. And I was like, ah, I don't want to buy another game that I've not played. And then yeah. I waited and waited, and now you can't find it for less than like seventy five. And I'm just wow. I, is it I'm because we talked about it? You think? And that's oh, yeah, it. Amerigo's up there. Form yeah. Trajanum's up there. Trajanum. I don't know how you say it. Trajan is good. A Trajan is really good. I feel like I'm missing oh, one. That's yeah. another like Trajan, like that the heavier ones. That I'm just blanking on. Kramer Keesling. Not Aqua Sphere. Yeah. No, I've not played Aqua Sphere. That would take not a really long time. Bonfire was really good too. Yeah, like I, I, I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I like Bruges. I, mean, I like Carpe Diem yeah. more than both of these guys. Carpe. I think he um, liked Carpe Diem. Quite it was an eight for me. It was really high. Okay, it's an eight for me too. Yeah, I liked it quite. So a bit. it was a seven or seven and a half. I just like the scoring in that game. Hey, Super when do unique. I get that game back? As soon as I do the video, I was supposed to do the video during I, COVID. I got to do a comparison mm, video between Carpe Diem. I sold it, and then I kind of regretted selling it. Um, and then Dean got the new version, and Dean is such a nice guy. He said, John. 
since I got this as a review copy, would you like to have the old version? And I said, absolutely. I'll take that back. Thank you, Dean. Mm. Carver Keesling Marathon. Yes. Yes. That would be I'm, awesome. I'm in. I still need that to would play be quite uh, the marathon. Though. I need to That's play like, Porta Negra. That's been on my man. list because I got it for five bucks that I, uh, Oh man, I want to play that so bad. Yeah. I've had so many people say that that's one of the pe like people don't talk about a lot. It's because it's so cheap. Not talking about. Well, excuse they, me. You assume because it's cheap, yes. it's not that good. They must have printed four billion copies of it, and that's what happened. That's the only thing I can think is that the supply way out, way out, bleh, outweighs the demand on that one. I've heard a lot of people say that. Several Aquasphere comics. I got it for five dollars. I I was so proud of that. I've never gotten right. a game for five bucks before. And it's like, a big box game. It's not like it's some little. Yeah. I like Carpe Diem just slightly better than than uh, Aquasphere, but Aquasphere is a lot of fun. I liked it too. Yeah, I, I agree with you guys though. In a sense, like a lot of his games kind of lump into like it's kind of similar. They're eight, eight and a half almost and, every time. Yeah, I, they go up to nine for me. Like so, but I'm still like it's usually like eight to nine, but nothing yeah. like in that super upper echelon. But and that also makes me like my top five and even ten can like slide around so much. I mean, I played Notre Dame the other day though. It's not up that high. You play that one. It's like, oh, but that's what I felt. Like, and I played the other day. I'm like, dang, this game is really good. Yeah. Like I, I felt I, I went back to it and I'm like, this is such a fast, fun game, you know, but that happens with me. Yeah. Like, and so it's a weird thing. Cause we talk about this sometimes about like liking games more cause our family likes it or things like that, that make your opinion of the game yeah. different. And so our local game group, there's lots of Feld fans. And so I find myself with games. It's kind of like love the one you're not with. If I can't get a game played, I tend to think about it more. And I don't have to do that with Feld because they get played ad nauseum all the time. Yeah. And so I'm never sitting there like, ooh, how can I get Bora Bora played? Well, Wendy, who's one of our friends, she that's her favorite game. Did you like it? It's good. I just rather play Trajan. I played Oracle of Delphi the other day. Yeah, you didn't like it as much as I did. Um, I know, it's it was good. It was fine. What this is what so what I didn't love um was the the rolling dice for the monsters. I'm, I'm going to be honest. It's been two years since I played it. Yeah. And so all I, what I remember of it is, is that there's, you didn't have to do every objective to win. And so that didn't, you do have to do them all. You have to, you get, have to, do you have to get three monsters, three. Yeah, okay. you do. And like what, what maybe it just wasn't in the game. I played a big deal because the rolls didn't pan out. Poorly. It, I mean, like I had a horrible, like what, what, what hosed me in the game. And again, this is, this may not happen Whoa. all the time. What if, oh, the door <laughs> matches are just opening over here. We've been here for like three hours and, <laughs> and then the door is magically open. But <laughs> what I didn't love was that, um, you know, if you roll the dice and you're wrong, that's okay. So you have to roll a nine to start off. Maybe I had two shields. I needed to roll a seven to win out of a nine. And then I didn't get that. So I gave up a favor or whatever those things are called. So I need to roll six. I need to roll five. I need to roll four. I need to roll three. Oh, okay. It got down to where like I'd lost like six, favor, all six of them. Mm. Like the odds of that happening were not like slim to none. I'm like, that was really, and that was the first move of the game. Like, because I did something or my I first or second move of the game, and I was like, I still like it though, and I would buy it. And I think I would like, I would buy it. I think for me, so sometimes what makes a game higher for me BJ's too. Says to the Oracle yeah. Yeah, that's what we're talking so about. BJ. Sometimes what, what gets me excited about a game is uniqueness too. It definitely had, a, yeah. And so I, while I love mathy Euro games, sometimes that gets old because that's what I play all the time. And so Oracle you, of Delphi is a point style game without points. And I, I feel like that's just brilliant because it's, it's fun. It's still a Feld. And you're still doing the same actions you would do in a Feld game, but you're not having to sit there and math it. Yeah. You're just doing objectives. And what's the other game that objectives? There's some other Euro game that I'm just blanking on right now. But it's, it's got an objective based win condition. We were talking about Tribune the other day. Oh, what yeah. Tribune is, yeah Tribune is one else. Yeah, that's it. So Tribune's the same way. It's a worker placement game, but you're doing certain objectives to win. And our buddy Matt Winneboard is the one who introduced me to that game. Yep, Nick, Nick Hayes says, yeah, but I shouldn't from the spot. <laughs> we <had a> some <laughs> his son got his phone, he said. Some folks, that's hilarious. Some folks were asking about uh, Amerigo. We mentioned a second ago, we all, except for John hasn't played, Dean and I really love Amerigo. And I think Dan said that he likes it if, that, if, it, if his thing counts. Yeah, Dean, yes, Dan, it counts. And yes, Amerigo is really, really good. Um, I'll, a couple of fun things. Was some folks had said that this was a fun stream, and Dan actually says, "Dean, including you, I guess, man. Look at that. I don't think I heard one game I dislike on this entire stream." Oh, I can fix that, Dan. I can, <laughs> I can, okay, hey, I, I mean, I texted you guys the other day. We're gonna do this. I'm, I've been having a hankering. Okay, Dean, sitting on the couch with COVID, I think has been thinking a lot about further away. Yeah, man. I can't help it. Sorry, I had to get up and close that door. Personal right space is what it is. Anyway, we don't have that issue, John. I've been thinking about a lot of older games space that I really want to get to the table. <laughs> we are going to us three. We're going to play Kemet. 
Cyclades and Inish. This into, will never happen. It will because it, Jonathan, you like. I know that you like Kim. It you Kim like has Inish. maybe the best battle system of any area. Control. I would agree. I would agree. I think it's fantastic. I, I love that battle system. Thanks, Dan. Uh, <laughs> La, Llama, Llama Llama. Is that the name of that game? Is that the game that we played? The, Lala, the kids game? Yeah. The, the, the card game. game. The, like, the reason it's not going to happen isn't because we don't want to play those games, Dean. It's because we have these grand plans and we all Every have single time. <laughs> and yeah, never I happens. want to play old games so bad. Yeah, yeah, so do we all. Let's do it. We don't have to... Psh. We can do what we want we to do. We don't have to. Psh, that's we don't, the greatest. We, don't even, we, we can do whatever we, we want. We could get off of this stream right now and play Paris. No, we couldn't. I got to go home. I do, too. <laughs> I do, too. That's what happens every time. Every time. All right. I missed the Michigan game for this, by the way. Or I'm missing the Michigan game. I don't even know what the score is. Right go now. Vols. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least you're not a UK fan. <laughs> <laughs> it's rough times. That's yeah, true. All right. That's it, I think. You guys no done? more questions? Yeah, that's good. We'll be here all day, maybe. All right. We... Love all y'all out there. Super fun today. We will talk with you later 42, on. 42-24. Holy moly. See y'all. Bye. Bye. See ya. <laughs>